What's going on, everybody? Cali Death Podcast back once again, episode 52, off of a nice little break. You guys didn't notice it, but we had a week break. That Hannes episode was to make sure that I could get to Vegas and see Joseph. We'll talk about that soon. Uh, as always, with my resident homies, Joel, Joseph, and Casey. Missed you guys last week. Thanks for fucking being here with me. C- real quick, congratulations once again. We've gotten over a 1,000 subscribers, finally. That's fucking awesome, dude. It's really sick to see that 1K right underneath your name on uh, YouTube. So fuck yeah to all you guys that have been spreading the word and, and uh, you know, sticking with us this whole time. It's it, much love to all you guys and gals. Um, today, we have brought somebody on that has been on here previously, obviously, and uh this guy right here has he doesn't realize what he had to do with getting this podcast started and uh he's helped us so much in the past with other things touring uh being homie being in a band and uh definitely consider him my death metal one of my death metal dads this is uh (laughs) (laughs) once again we brought on mike hamilton what's going on brother What's happening, gentlemen? Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Good to be Good. back. Yeah. F- 52 <laughs> weeks ago. 52 weeks ago. Well, you came on with, uh, I was going to say, like, it's been a year, but actually it was yeah. like, back in, like, February, I think, you guys yeah. did an episode Yeah. at the end of February. So, basically, dude, it's, it's fucking been a long fucking time. And, right. and dude, you, we always love you, having you. We love being and hanging out with you so it's like why fucking not dude yeah other podcasts have multiple guests that come on multiple times and mike hamilton is on my list of guys who can come back as many fucking times as you awesome want. man right on well yeah congratulations to you guys and all your hard work you guys have been pushing this you know pretty good and uh i'm proud of you guys so just keep it going man thanks oh, yeah. dude yeah Thank i you. mean we're still having fun you know it's not getting it's dead <laughs> thanks dad you're welcome sons <laughs> good job no but for real it's like it, you know when you got something like this going it, it it could get stale for a certain amount of people yeah. you know that do it and um i'm i'm lucky that i'm with people that i don't get bored of looking at every single week week my resident homies yeah. and uh it, and it's just we're getting all these cool dudes on all you know females as well and and learning everybody's stories and seeing all the simula- similarities yeah. and differences and we've had enough episodes to where it's like oh okay we've kind of got like an idea of the baseline of what it is to be a musician in this style of music sure. you know and um it's really cool to uh continue doing this you know you and i had talked about some other things how we want to expand this and and sure. talk to different you know types of people in the scene and absolutely because everybody's and, important so, you know everybody has a role you know so it's kind of cool to introduce you know everybody or just get yeah. it so for a second year i think that that's definitely something that we're going to be doing be ex- expanding it outside of musicians getting into you know engineers and you know um artwork you know artists that are doing artwork and all this type of shit that all those are great ideas dude and and so i don't see this thing stopping anytime soon. yeah the cool thing about that is like you know when we were kids buying records like you would base the record on the artwork so Mm -hmm. like the artwork plays a huge role in this music like you know so yeah that'd be a good avenue to uh check out check talk to some artists and talk about the stories behind, you know, creating the albums, working with the band and, and where they got the ideas and where, you know, all that, that whole formation of how the album covers came to be would be amazing to, to uh, totally to dude. Dive and, into and that. There's plenty of dudes out there that are making sick shit that I would love to, you know, just like we do with the musicians go back in the past, instead sure. of asking them when they picked up a guitar, I'd say, when did you pick up a pencil and start Absolutely. putting it to paper, you, paper, you know, and start totally. fucking doodling that's all it's it's all symbiotic for sure Mm -hmm. yeah i wanted to say too we're like we're just stoked to have you on like as like just you mike you know because you've been on twice with uh, with band episodes and so like we're such good friends and we have so many fun stories over the years and all the touring we did and stuff with deeds and just man we had so much fun and like 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 you said like or like Anthony was saying that you were totally like the death metal dad for us. Like you were basically yeah. the tour manager along with other people, but yeah. you, you always were there for us. Like just to be like, 
keeping stuff together and in line sure. and stuff. And uh, yeah, well, that just comes from just like you know, probably personally from being like the oldest of four boys. You know what I mean? It's just like that leadership role. It's like mm-hmm. I'm responsible mm-hmm. for my little brothers. You guys, are my little brothers. You know what I mean? Totally, I gotta look out dude. for you. <laughs> Well, oh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah, what Casey's saying, we totally, it's not that we're just on the podcast calling you death metal dad. I, anytime yeah. I like talk about you outside anywhere, I'm just like, dude, Mike's like my dad, dude. Like, yeah. that's like, well, like I literally any say parent, that. we got, yeah. we have to have this conversation because, you know, I know that you want to play music. I know <laughs> yeah. that you really love music, but you can't do this the rest of your life. Okay. You're going to have to get a job eventually. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah you kind of like broke it that. down pretty early on for us i mean yeah we were no like, no you know, i don't know i just well, i mean as far as there's got to be a balance you can't be in a band and just be fucking broke all the time you know and have totally. a blast on tour and then come back and live in your car like you got to figure out that balance exactly it's hard, you know for some bands because they never reach that level where you're able to afford mm-hmm. you know both lifestyles so that's the tough thing about it but that's why it's our passion because we don't care about the results of after tour or you know we just we want to create music and that's yeah and you caught us are. like so, you caught us in the very beginning too so we like had the yeah. bright-eyed bushy tail oh we got signed and like oh we're gonna do yeah. all this shit and like you were like all right it's fun like it's doable but it's yeah. not like but, something that you could rely on as your main yeah. you know because i was like whatever i'm gonna quit my you know i had all these like like 22 year old fantasies like i'm gonna do this and do that yeah. and it's just gonna be music all the way and blah well, blah don't and be like, confused by the smoke and mirrors you know you gotta mm-hmm. stay grounded because it's you know exactly it's, it's Obviously, it's our passion. It's what we want to do. But it's like still a same token. You got to be able to pay your bills when you get home. So that's the most important thing. Totally. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Sure. But regardless Especially, of that, I mean, fuck, I mean, just create. You know what I mean? Never stop, like, dude. Never stop. Whatever yeah. it is, even if it's not the projects that we're talking about, like aside from the music and the death, metal, always create something, dude. Totally. Make things just even if it's writing for sure something yeah. down. De- de- just that's the only thing that really keeps it alive for me is if i make something just i have a goal i'm gonna work on that yeah. even if it's something small with my kids where i'm doing legos and shit you know it's yeah. it's still making something and totally. and showing you know the younger ones how important it is to stay in that creative state yeah. as much as you can and and really fuck with your you know imagination yeah now, like with us growing up, our parents kind of pushed it. There was always music in schools, but it's kind of sad. Like now, I don't know, but most schools actually just kind of stopped their music program, which, yeah. you know, which now you have to seek like, you know, an outside party to, to teach your kids, you know, to play music, you know, like drum schools or guitar. By the way, hit up that. Casey Howard. He'll, 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 yeah. yeah. What well, they do in high school, it just, it just depends. You know, it's right. like, there's like marching band and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, but yeah, you're right, man, for sure. A little yeah. side note, just a fast question that I just thought of right now, Casey. Have you ever had a student that was like really resistant to your lessons? Of course not, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Never. No. Man. It's like a, a parent forcing them in or something. Probably you have to deal with that every now and then. Yeah. Yeah, this, oh, this guy's yeah. a drum legend. You have to learn from him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Teach him the blast beat. Yeah. yeah. I always oh, I start my lessons explaining how I invented the blast beat. <laughs> I go on from there, and then yeah. the, they're sold. No, oh, yeah. No, these are man. these are all the different variations of the blast beat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, oh, yeah, I mean, I don't even want to get into. So, oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> no. so, but dude, speaking of which, I remember when I when I very first just to like sidetrack for a second because we're kind of on a unique path tonight anyways uh i remember when i lived in santa cruz and i was you know playing in, in decrepit with and i lived with joel and at the furniture dome and all that yeah and uh and mike I, w- I was like teaching there at the time and stuff it was like when i first started teaching and and, and you hit me up and you were like hey man i'm like in santa cruz a bunch i don't know if you were like living there at the time but you you set up your drum set and kept your dr- the the deeds of flesh drum set in my bedroom yeah for like a, like a few months or whatever it was. Yeah, know? I didn't have a place to jam. And right. I was up there uh, at the time I lived in Santa Cruz, probably about a year for a relationship. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah. I was like, fuck, I need somewhere to keep my drums. They're like, dude, you could totally bring them here. And I was like, sick, I'll bring them over. I think I probably jammed like a total of like maybe four or five times. Not much, but. <laughs> that was at the furniture dome? Yeah, yeah furniture, furniture dome. But yeah, it was cool. I mean, I was like, you know, meeting you guys and just seeing your you know, your little layer that you had, that was like, this is killer. Cause it just seemed like there was always musicians coming in and out, like all different, you know, levels and, 
you've had you yeah know, it was kind of like sure. a, an apartment that inspired other people to be like whoa this is like there's some pretty fucking heavy musicians up in this place i better you know get with them and jam but i remember yeah that was uh, that was pretty fun yeah so I, just to, to remind the listeners like this is a like an apartment that we had that was on top of a, of a, of a furniture store so yeah. we could play like music super loud at starting at like seven o'clock at night or whatever all night we would jam basically yeah because you don't want to interrupt the 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 uh two thousand dollar <laughs> sofa deal going on exactly. downstairs. Yeah. you don't want to you don't want to inter- you don't want to interrupt the guy who's taking a nap on the mattress yeah. that he's trying to he's buy like, hey i'm trying to sell fucking lazy boys down here <laughs> <laughs> we had to compete with a, a blues club too that was fucking exactly. loud as fuck like yeah. like one building over That's and it would cool. just be like blows out so, yeah yeah that, Mose yeah. Alley, yep yeah so just be like completely insane noise from there and it's like whatever let's let's fucking compete. remember when you walk I, home in your underwear and then the cops came up <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah from Mo's alley we had a, a stratosphere night and joel decided he was gonna walk home with his pants around his ankles and then a Gosh. fucking cop pulled him on us that never nice. happened oh, wasn't, that, wasn't right. that considered the decrepit the decrepit uh layer at one time yeah it, it was, was the, the yeah, decrepit, decrepit odious, odious. Yeah, odious. Brain drill mainly drill in there a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I just remember that time. It was cool, like having. I, I would just like, like, cause it, like I had my room, and it was like a like a big bedroom, and so I had like extra room, and I put the bed in the corner so I could fit yeah. your, your drum set in my room, and then my kit was out in the living room. Yeah, and then we would jam in the living room with decrepit and odious or whatever. Yeah, um, but like, it which was, was like, nice. Yeah, but it was funny. It was like your kit was like right, like all sick, like the deeds. It was like <laughs> like you had like 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 the Viking like shit. Did on you the, kiss the bass did drums? You kiss his kiss and I would like before you fell asleep. I'd like night. I'd like wake up in the morning and I'm just like you know and I'm like oh shit like this is Viking like kick drum staring at me. Yeah, like, just <laughs> lean over so real quick. You can play it when you want it. it was a, good night, it, sweetie. It's, it's a nice sonar. Is it the the S? q2 or something no like it's that. the s class s class yeah okay. it's like yeah. i got it in 2003 and i actually bought it through Derek roddy when he was working at right. a drum shop yeah i um oh, word yeah so cool. deeds and haiti eternal did a tour together and he let everybody borrow his kit and i was like uh, or actually he he had yeah. his kit his sonar s class the blue ones i think and i just remember hearing those every night like damn they sound so good and he's like yeah. well, hit me up after this tour i'll get you a kit I'm like killer so I hit him up and he's like, I got one in stock, dude. What do you want? I was like, I want 20s. I want 10, mm-hmm. 12, 14. And at the time I didn't do a floor time. So yeah, he sent it out to me and I got it and unboxed it. And I was like, this thing's shit. And I still have it to this day. Nice. It's nice. pretty awesome. Yeah. Oh, no floor I time, huh? That's a no, interesting. I bought, I, I since have bought a floor time. I have succumbed to the pressures of having an 18 inch <laughs> floor time. <laughs> cool. 18. Nice. I mean, the only reason why I never put a, and this is funny because Back in the day, with we toured with Discords, he just had like a basically like an export five piece kit with an extra bass drum. We had mm-hmm. two toms, that was it, two rack toms, mm-hmm. and it was just easy to set up, set you know, and do set changes. So that's like the floor tom, just like another piece that you had to like fuck with. But for uh-huh. me, it was just yeah, it yeah. was just the efficiency of like you know breaking down real quick and getting it off stage so that the you know the next band oh, after oh. you had more time to set up and stuff. So I I remember in like what was it 2000 or whatever like i was still in high school and like you, you guys did bloodletting one yeah and I, I went to that show at the, at the showcase in corona and stuff and i remember that i remember going like whoa like there's no floor tom like when when ricky was setting up yeah and then like i remember that and then like i saw you play and i remember i remember you had no floor tom you know yeah. and so i like went home like like to my kit and tried playing without the floor tom yeah like, actually tried it but yeah, well, out, of, make, out of muscle memory, joke. did you go for it and then? Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like the four times. <laughs> you like the yeah. air, yeah. air ball? Yeah, <laughs> I just made the joke where I just I don't have time to hit it because there's so much shit going on. But yeah, yeah. but I just didn't. I never got one just because I I wanted like a the fourteen essentially is like a floor tom for yeah, the sonar because yeah. it's like fourteen by like fourteen square. So mm-hmm. it's a pretty it's they're all power tom. So it's it's it sounds like a floor tom. It's just easier to have it rack mounted because. You know, Deeds would very rarely. We would headline the bloodletting tours, but if we ever went out on another tour, it's be it's, everything's on the rack. You can just pick it up, move it, boom, you're done. You know what, what I mean? What tour was the? Uh, I saw, so the first time I saw you guys was the Gathering of the Sick, and it was because uh, my brother was friends with um, Laughing Dog. Okay. So like, so like we went out and like met up with Laughing Dog, like helped him load up, loaded him. I was like a kid. I was. Why like is that fucking, familiar to me? Sorry to cut you off. Uh, laughing. I think they're Dog. on relapse still. I think they're oh, still really? like yeah. a relapse okay. band. Yeah, so yeah. That's why are. it's familiar. Yeah. Yeah, they actually got a pretty big out. I think they were unsigned. They might have been talking to relapse or something at the time. But well, it was, they toured. They toured with Cephalic Carnage quite a bit too. That's they're right. Like yeah. They're buddies with Cephalic Carnage. They're from Albuquerque, I think. Albuquerque. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So yeah, 
basically, I remember like seeing your stuff all set up. I don't know. Was that Gathering One that that met up with that, or was that just another tour? Or Maybe um, it may have been Gathering One. I know we missed a gathering because we missed our flight. Like by, I mean, it was. I think we missed our flight by an hour. Like when we got there, we were in the airport, but it was just by they didn't would they wouldn't let us board because we were we weren't there like right when they. Uh, so mm. they kind of sucked, but yeah. Then we only played one. I think um, I think that band Emeth played there as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Her, I'm trying to remember been, the lineup. I'm trying to remember too. I remember we played there with Emeth or Emeth or whatever you call them. I yeah. remember Wretch. Wretch was there. Yeah. The band Wretch. Oh, sick. And like Wretch kind of like stuck out to you guys, and Wretch stuck out to me as like my yeah. favorites of the night. But, Wretch uh, is dope, dude. Yeah. yeah. I saw them yeah. at Maryland the first time i went it was the first maryland death fest and it was just two dudes up there with a the drum yeah. machine i've never and seen fucking... that was the first time i ever saw that i mean i never saw whitaker or anything before that so i was like oh yeah Whitaker. Or anything. That guy's yeah so man, I, never, and, I think actually he might even play that too i don't even know but it's yeah, pretty savage style... like future pile future pile being up there just him with the yeah, drum yeah. machine you know oh, yeah i just saw that like at that show we we're gonna talk about sin city slaughter fest yeah oh, dude yeah. isn't that yeah. dope to just see one dude up there fucking sh- like just being brutal as fuck. Well, I've never <laughs> seen them. I really want to see them. Yeah, the last two. It's just one guy though. <laughs> no, no, no. No, yeah, no. it's no. The, you the, said them. Their drummer's Roland. Don't forget about him. Boy, yeah. Andrew Pyle's got a drummer now. Yeah, yeah his name Roland. 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 Oh Roland. shit, dude! I didn't know that. I was. I'm still thinking of when he was with the drum machine. Oh, it's well, a Roland yeah. drum machine. Well, he, he, used to, he used to have. I still didn't fucking get it, you fucking assholes. <laughs> well, he used to have Elises, but Elises got fired because Roland took his spot. So, yeah. <laughs> I love seeing that, like, Derek the, Roland, joke. the Sean Whitaker, though, up there, just like the like, fucking skeleton, like the way oh, he yeah. moves up there. Like, yeah. I just love the way he moved up there. I was like, he just, uh, he opened up for Decrepit at uh, Andy's yeah, yeah. Social Club that one night, too. I remember that, too. Yeah. And, awesome. and totally fucking. Just His crushes it by himself, great, dude. Just love it. Here's, yeah, a, yeah. here's a fun fact. He also played with Discords a long time ago. I think he yeah. played one show or maybe two shows or a few shows. But oh wow, yeah. wow! I, have no I didn't idea. know that. That's funny. I was uh I was hanging out with him when we played in Tucson together uh, to violently vomit and Sean Whitaker, and he told me and Diego was there like to confirm. He wrote some of the riffing on the song "Dissecting the Apostles." Oh, yeah. shit! Yeah. So he's so. an OG. You got to have him on, man. That oh, guy's yeah. a badass. That's, That's what I said. Totally That's what I said. I'm like, we got, we got to get Sean Whitaker on. I just met him. He's super rad. So shout out, Sean. Yeah, oh, Sean's yeah. shout man. out, dude. Yeah. He's the man. We'll be, he's we'll be uh, contacting you soon, bro. Yeah, and he's yeah. still doing it. He's still doing it. And his new music is super sick. And the live show is fucking awesome still. So yeah, yeah and he's yeah. got, he's got it made because he can just cruise in a car and put his shit in his car. He <laughs> excellent gas mileage. He's not have to deal with any other human beings. For anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about, it's insidious <laughs> decrepancy. Oh yeah. And he was yeah. Yeah. Viral, viral, viral load, viral well. load. Yeah, viral yeah. load was another and his yeah. new project is just called saw Sean. s-a-w okay. Okay. yeah doesn't yeah. he have one just says sean whitaker it just has like yeah all... it's like sometimes it's saw and then underneath it says sean whitaker oh okay, so okay. i think it's like both like he used both names but yeah, yeah. everyone knows uh, who you're talking about if you're yeah, talking to a death metal guy yeah they <laughs> got he, he basically got grandfathered into that drum machine and then same with future pile and stuff of that still if they could show up and play with just the drum machine people are like fuck yeah but yeah. if any other band shows up nowadays with like a drum machine they're like yeah. wasn't there another one called blood soaked oh that's right was it yeah, blood yeah. Soaked? i think it was blood soaked yeah another yeah, one. Yeah. yeah you guys ever seen the uh the uh broadaquin footage with the dude who's playing the drum machine with his fingers yeah, <laughs> no way. I have seen I fucking that. playing I drums with that. his hand wow. with his fingers up there going, on a drum machine. Didn't I tell you about that, Anthony? I was the <laughs> one who crazy. told you about that. I think, I think I you were, that. dude. I mean, it probably happened like early in on those podcasts, maybe. Yeah. I remember yeah. looking that up or maybe that was a post pod where you put that. I on. showed that to you guys post pod. And That's then, right. dude, I hung out with Jay. You remember Jason Nitz from Warforged who we had on? Yeah, this? fuck yeah. yeah. Shout out, Jason. No I just texted him today. He didn't respond, motherfucker. Oh, shit, Jason. <laughs> you better talk to Anthony. He he was the drum tech for that show. And he ended up hanging out like because he's teching for the drum, mach- the drum machine player. And, <laughs> and he said that, dude, I, I want to just have no sense. It, it, well, he, he he's like, he's all, Here, let me hook you up, bro. Click and then he goes like, turn it up. All right. You want eight? Is it eight good? He's all helping him warm his fingers up. Let me get the fingers warmed up, bro. <laughs> he's he's teching the whole like Chicago domination fest. And then oh my God. he's, he's like, like, all right, he's standing right behind him and give yeah. him a water and shake him <laughs> a towel. Like, come on. <laughs> he literally Wiping said. Had. He Why literally said, red for him? I, I want to recount Jason's story because he said the dude was like a little 
I don't know, like embarrassed. And maybe he's like, dude, I just have to go up there. And I was, he's like bummed. He couldn't play real drums. He's like actually uh, a real drummer. He just yeah. couldn't for, for whatever, like injury or disability or something. And then he, like Jason gave him like a pep talk. And then afterwards he was like, dude, thanks so much for talking to me Fuck earlier. Yeah. You helped me out. And he like bought Jason beers and shit. That sounds like a and Jason like, thing, dude. What a heartwarming he's, he's story, guy, man. He's that yeah. kind of guy, dude. Well, speaking of drum taking Troy Fullerton, shout out because you text the Sin City Slaughterfest show that we just played and nothing felt better than having Troy there to help me out getting my yeah. shit going. Oh, yeah, and uh, he did a great job. And oh, yeah. uh, nice. I mean, he should have played the festival for sure. I would have loved totally. to see him play drums, but yeah, yeah. I'm absolutely kicking myself for not going, but um, ah, dude. All right. Let's just I've fucking seen, do it real quick. Let's just get into it real quick. Let's just because I had so much fucking fun that night. Go for it. God damn it. And, um, and I was uh, I was FaceTiming with Joel. Actually, he was FaceTiming with my homie Mikey thinking it was or no, you were texting with Mikey thinking it was Mikey, but Mikey gave me his phone. So I was texting him as him. So I was fucking with you the whole time. And then we <laughs> FaceTimed and I told you that I was like, I might go. And you're like, fuck, dude, don't tell me that, dude. I might buy a ticket right now. And I'm like, fucking buy a ticket, dude. Just fucking yeah, was, make it I was like, I was, I was like drunk on a Friday night, which means I'd have to find the ticket for like the morning the next day. <laughs> And it just seemed logistically, it was just like, impo- and like I was looking, it's like, yeah, I could do it for a thousand dollars to fly, but I'm just, you know, it was already too late. I just blew it. I should have planned better. That's all I, uh, well, I was there for something the totally random, something, something totally different. I was out there to see Tom Segura and I was out there to fucking drink and eat hella food and be out there without my kids. And, you know, my brother, my best friend, our, all our wives, we all just went out kidless and, and then it just so happens that fucking Slaughterfest was happening the same weekend. And I was like, you know what? Fuck this, dude. Yeah. Joseph's right fucking like 15 minutes away. He's about to play to violently vomit. What's up? Yeah, right scored shit. And I'm like, how am I not going to fucking go to this, dude? So uh, we went to a show that night, 11 p.m. Uh, ended at like you know, 1245 or 1230 or something. And as soon as we finished with that show, I said, peace out to everybody that I was with. I'm taking Bryce. We're going back down to Fremont street because fucking to violently vomit was going to play. And dude, we literally showed up like five minutes before you guys were going to go on. You were we, literally we played so late. We didn't start till after 1 a.m. Oh, so. man. <laughs> it was, fun. it was great for me because it gave me some time to get to you guys. Like, Oh yeah. I literally walked in and, like not even 10 minutes later, you guys were starting your first yeah. song. I was like, good thing. There's nothing else to do in Vegas. So <laughs> yeah, and shout out to, uh, shout out to Chris Beatty, the dude who fucking does our intro song, guitar player and mad mind and fucking dreamer. That's the next shit you guys are going to be down with for sure. Uh, thank you so much, Chris, for helping me out and getting me fucking in there quick without having to fucking pay that shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, like shout out for, to Roger and Mike Gordon for keeping yep. the, the totally you know, the Vegas Death Fest like exactly. scene going because yeah, it, it wasn't going to happen for a while, and then you know you know how the old um, Las Vegas Death Fest like just kind of fell apart. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm glad that Roger is out there now and Mike Gordon's still behind it. So Roger's so actually living in did, Vegas. Yeah, I'm sorry. Everybody else that helped put it together is awesome because, you know, yeah. it's, a, it's a killer fest. It's always been like all about the most extreme, brutal bands. And they're just keeping that in the same fashion, which is good because, you know, it's it's cool to have a festival. that's just, you know, underground death metal, which mm-hmm. is exactly. well, how was the how was the turnout for it? Was it was successful enough? Do you think it'd happen again or I think so? Yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it was definitely a great vibe. Like we felt taken care of. We felt like on, you know, as from the perspective of coming to play it, everything was 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 great. And uh, especially shout out to Roger because he murdered the first night with Mortician. Yeah. And then, you know, took care of us the next day and and we're all good. Um, And, you know, Big Mike was around and I got to say what's up to him. So, I mean, he's, you know, been carrying it for so long like you were yeah. just saying yeah so i want to yeah, actually those are, those are those brothers guys right those here. dudes are my brothers right there man yeah They're awesome dudes and if uh, you're ever in vegas stop by roger's store primitive recordings it's like yep. a record store boom and yeah hell yeah dude so how'd you feel on that set i thought you guys fucking crushed my face open it was pretty sick dude i mean it was fun and uh it was so fun having Diego Soria on bass and yeah, Angel. two Diego's on stage. Two Diego's on stage, 
and uh, Angel Ochoa on vocals, and he was like a great frontman for he's us. He's a fucking monster, dude. I mean, he's as much a Discord vocalist as any of the other Discord vocalists. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we just had a great vibe and it just was fun. We did the whole like one, two, three TVV, like on stage with the curtains <laughs> closed before we started, nice. which I've never done before. So that was fun. Uh, and then I'm watching the footage and yeah, we played things a little slower in the pocket. And next time I kind of want to like take it back up a notch, but I was trying to like keep it in the pocket because we had only really done like one or two rehearsals with the dudes. Who That's were rare, new. man, that you keep it actually slower. Usually like when you're nervous, you go way faster. That's cool that actually you. You kept it down a little bit. Usually it's complete opposite at 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 the show. Like it felt right. Like we, we were like going a little slow and crushing it. But I mean, I play the fast parts all just as fast. It's only the slow parts. I slow down a little more. But uh, I mean, dude, it was so fun. And I was uh, feeling it, dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I got VIP status. I was on on the stage with you guys side stage. I like I mean, forgot you were there until the set ended i'm like oh yeah anthony's here <laughs> <laughs> that's all good dude yeah. i was trying to dig, i was trying to stay uh, in the in the shadows but at the same time there's certain parts of discords that make you fucking move a lot more frantically than yeah. trying to hide so i was getting down though dude. i want to shout out stabbing who played the same day as us they are fucking killer if you're in the underground, you've probably heard of them. They're getting a lot of hype right now. You definitely need to check out their demo and they've got an EP coming out. Hell yeah. They, they were super sick. They gave me their demo and I listened to it and and it definitely fucking got me head banging, dude. And the cool thing about that band is that it's two couples. It's yep. like Entheos times two. It yep. doesn't sound like Entheos, but it's like, you know, two relationships that actually came together as one full relationship to make this band yeah and it's and the fuck it what is it's the bass player and the vocalist that are female right yeah yeah and she's fucking brutal dude yeah shout out to bridget she's the sickest and yeah i, I met her she's they were super sweet dude they, she uh, stole the show for sure yeah hell yeah dude that's what's up dude i'll be right uh, back gentlemen uh, for sure. for that's kind of gnarly there's two so two relationships to one band so so basically essentially that's three relationships right mm -hmm. that's that's you got the band relationship and then two relate like that seems yeah, it, is. it seems i mean on paper it's fucking rad but like seems a, a little volatile keep track <laughs> I of, like, dude. Like, i don't <laughs> know like i mean i'm just putting it you know like I, i've never seen them or met them or anything but like what could go wrong like <laughs> i know what could, exactly yeah, exactly um, yeah, a lot can go right it turns out so yeah that's cool yeah if everyone's uh, on the same page oh, it could rules. be just like a that could yeah. be okay. huge you know that could be essentially yeah. huge if they like make it keep going and touring and stuff like that that can well, be that's like, what made my ears perk up when i heard the totally. that information i was like oh shit dude i gotta see what's up with this band it's like the I'm... first time you see like a, a like a woman with a, a brutal death metal band you're like what mm -hmm. and then you're like it, you immediately like want to go watch like it's yeah. like when sinister was like oh dude uh, we got a female singer now and you're like what yeah exactly they were and like the first off. to kind of do that right? well sinister. actually perfect timing since mike just came back uh there, there, there was a female band that opened for you guys on that Bloodletting One show called Permiscuous. Do you remember that band? Oh, man, that was a while ago. I like actually don't. I don't. Like the girl had like like pink leather pants on or something, and she was just a growling. Oh, okay. I remember. I remember the band. I don't remember what they sound like. They were pretty good. I remember they had like a guy drummer, but everyone else was a girl in the band. I think. Right. Right. Um, that. They were pretty good. I mean, I was like, they were sick. I I was like pretty new to the style at the time, but yeah, I was yeah. Like just getting into metal. I was like seventeen or something. Yeah. Nice. Just a couple more shout outs from the show. Uh, yeah. Nice. Uh, Humo Maya, the drummer of Animals Killing People. We took an Uber <laughs> straight. Oh, <man. laughs> so, yeah, no. We took an Uber. We shared an Uber from the show, the venue to the airport. And I caught my 6 a.m. flight back to San Fran. He caught his uh, 6 a.m. flight to New York. So he also filmed our set. So shout out. And then nice, uh, the band Euphoric Defilement were like, they they like killed it and before shout us, out like, juan hernandez yeah sh juan's this the fucking man he and is the rest the of those guys man, yeah um and uh malignancy dudes you guys should come on here um yeah. oh god there's more i'll probably remember a few more but uh and Just future pile the, yeah no doubt dude that for sure future pile should be how was malignancy dude. were they they're hot dude they're fucking super sick right now was alex that heller cohen. drumming for him no it's alex uh Cohen, Cohen. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And right uh on. he killed it. Alex nice. Weber on bass, playing one of I think his own made bass. You know, he's got a bass company. Okay. Uh and uh still Danny on yep. is that yeah. 
Yeah. And I never caught the guitarist's name, even though I talked to him the most. Is actually, it Rob. Is that Rob? It's yeah. Ron. 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 Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Ron. Yeah. He talked my ear off at the merch table and it was, it was yeah. fun. Yeah. Those dudes are rad, man. Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, dude. The old school fucking homies, dude. Like, yeah, totally. That older. I, th- I think Alex Weber, like, might have, like, uh, added me or something on Facebook a long time ago. Like, Alex Webster, like, <laughs> that was like <laughs> you spelled it wrong or you read it wrong. Well, you look at, like, yeah. you know, when you look at a word, your brain looks at the first, like, letters yeah, and the last yeah, letter. Yeah, so I was yeah, like, yeah, dude, yeah. Alex Webster's adding me right now. Alex like, Webb, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But no, I was still, like, wouldn't watch the shit. And I'm like, yeah. this guy fucking shreds. This guy's yeah, super those good. guys, those malignancy guys, man, they're so, like, underrated. They're such a good technical band. They're, and they're just so, their style is just so crazy but it's like fucking it's killer oh yeah yeah those oh, pinch yeah. So they're all they're all over the place man it it's is. total add metal man it's fucking yeah. killer <laughs> oh yeah it is I know. it's killer it's, yeah. it's fun to listen yeah, to. Dude. yeah no people ask me like how did you learn all those discord songs i'm like dude that's nothing compared to learning a malignancy song. totally it's like, <laughs> fucking, <laughs> i could not that do that yeah. yeah like i it's can't wild. i couldn't even yeah um yeah. and then austin and the embryonic devourment dudes okay, also cool. showed oh, up nice. and yeah. six sets, yeah, yeah. So. shout out yeah. dude yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah dude hell yeah but, uh mike i wanted to uh maybe turn turn to the news that this uh deeds of flesh is uh Reforming the You're original. You're fucking back in it, man. bro. I know. Not original, yeah, classic cool. lineups. Yeah. So what's well, going on with that, man? So, you know, it was, it was, a, we didn't really have any expectations like putting the nucleus out. Mostly it just started off as like, let's just finish this record for Eric. Let's get it out. And, you know, and this, that way his final like body of work can be heard by people. Mm-hmm. And so with that, once it was out, then we started getting contacted by people. And we're just like, at the time we're like, well, we don't really have any plans on touring, but then we started thinking, well, we might be able to maybe do a festival here and there, but everybody has families, everybody has, you know, professional jobs and everything. So it was kind of tough to navigate. We started talking about it. And it's like, well, Hellfest reached out to us. We're like, well, fuck, how do you say no to Hellfest? Yeah. So yeah. then the topic of like, well, who are we going to fly? everybody out or are we going to do because darren did so much for this record and you know he's such an awesome player and he's such a a humble and awesome dude it's like how do we want to do this like do we want to just have him do the nuclear stuff or you know who who's going to play on drums so we we talked about it for a while we didn't really because we didn't want to like you know step on his toes but at the same time i feel like the fans would want to see deeds with me on drums. Fuck. Yeah. So just the, just for the old school stuff, like the new mm-hmm. school stuff, maybe Darren could play. And then everybody's like, well, it's going to get a little bit too much as far as like, you know, it's just going to be too confusing. So we kind of just decided. And we asked Darren, like, how would you feel? You know, Mike took the throne back and he was pretty actually like accepting of it. He's like, you know, I understand. It's like, it's a hard blow to take. Cause I really wanted to, you know, to do this, but I understand like it's his rightful place. So he was, you know, he was very humble and, and, you know, accepting of that. But so, yeah, we uh, were like, okay, well, let's fuck, let's play a couple festivals. Why not, man? It's like, you know, when, uh, when Deeds was kind of slowing down and Eric was more focused on family, unique leaders, like, you know, the, the thought of touring, this was kind of like, oh, that's not going to happen. So, you know, but now we have an opportunity to play. So it's, you know, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to like jamming these songs out with, you know, with everybody. And we've already done one rehearsal, which is kind of, kind of cool, man. It's like to sit like been 15, easily 15 years. And that's what I want to hear about. Started yeah, playing so this stuff. So I want to be a fly on the wall in that jam. Yeah. So, so, this so, is- so we announced that the lineup is basically Jacoby, Craig, Ivan's on guitar and uh, Craig's on guitar. Jacoby's picking the bass back up Yeah, and then yeah. I'll be on drums. So, yeah. And I think they're going to do like the OG, like orgasm with the, the triple vocal. So, you know, cause some of the stuff on, of what's to come in portals, vocally are just like so fast that it would probably be pretty challenging for jacoby to do those vocals and play bass so we'll probably split the duties up but you know we're gonna do everything that we can for the you know to make sure that this is deeds you know what i mean Uh, yeah so yeah respect to uh fucking darren for understanding and absolutely cool about that and doing all that yeah for sure because he he sat on the throne, did fucking new totally. He shit did a and- lot of work for the band, like promoting yeah. the record, promoting, you know, himself and, and also doing the drum playthroughs and stuff like that, just to really build the brand. Like just he he did a lot. And I'm super grateful and and you know, super respectful of, you know, 
what he's done and by no means there's no bad blood. I'm not, you know, I didn't want to step on his toes. I was like, how do you feel about it? I had a pretty lengthy conversation. I'm like, this is an awkward position to be in, but mm-hmm. I really want to do this. And he's like, I understand, dude. And so he had, a, we all had a conversation and it just was like, okay, well, this is what makes sense. So let's do this. That's so super cool, dude. That's cool. Yeah. Are you yeah. learning how many of those Nucleus songs do you have to learn now? Um, well, I can't divulge too much information because the set's going to be kind of, you know, it's supposed to be hush hush. Yeah. Um, we're not going to announce any of the songs, but probably okay. two of the Nucleus songs, okay. the, which, nice. is cra- which is crazy because, like, I actually, me and Eric and Craig were demoing the drums. Like, we were actually doing like a guitar pro. So I actually had there's actually another set of drum takes other than Darren's um, that I may kind of bounce back and forth through his and through mine. Um, That way it feels more like my drumming because, you know, no disrespect to Darren. He's an amazing drummer, but we have two totally different drumming styles. Styles, And so we're going to, you know, I'm not going to change anything, but I'm not, I'm going to make it to where it's, it makes sense for me to play. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I think the yeah. question Casey wanted to ask, I, I think I'm going to see if I can, I'm, I'm reading his mind Let's right now. Was the last, it. was the last show you played the, the bloodletting show um, with us? Yeah. He's a flesh. Yeah. That's one of the, the question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. not it's the one that you, you uh, lost, dude. I thought, okay, Casey, go, you go. <laughs> oh, well, I was just all like, dude, I want to know like everything about that rehearsal. I mean, what, whatever you can do. I mean, I want to, I want like a complete, Play by play, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thing. yeah like, Whatever you want to play, yeah. Well, you there was the some latest. double bass flurries. There was. Some oh, I want to know blasting. everything. There was a bunch yeah. of. Yeah. Things, you know, Who's that, the latest yeah. to show up? Yeah, <laughs> the latest to be ready. Dude. Well, it was it was just me, Ivan, and and Jacoby. You know, and okay. it was just I don't know, just felt awesome to be in the room. Just like, all right, we're playing deed songs. This is cool, and so, mm. like. Obviously, we started off with the older songs because they're the ones that are, you know, more manageable as far as tempo wise and memory and all that stuff. But, you know, we've been we basically picked out a set. We've been listening to it. We've all been rehearsing with it for, you know, probably the, like the last three months. So we're familiar with what we're going to do. Um, we played Path of the Weakening front to back straight through. It's like, holy shit, that felt fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. So we just started like busting through. Like we played Cleanse by Fire, like three minute crawl space, reduced uh, to ashes. How did that feel when you're playing those songs though, dude? Like, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. You played um, Path of front to back? Not the album, no, the, the song. The weakening, oh, I was the like, song. oh my God. Yeah, dude. no, no. I was no. Like, I'm just yeah, throwing yeah. I seriously <laughs> thought that for like 10 yeah. seconds. I was no, like, <laughs> it, yeah. it felt good, man. It was just, um, you know, it just reminded me how much fucking double bass are in these songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For real. It's like, because I was, I've been riding my bike every day for like three <laughs> weeks, like 12 miles minimum. And just because I remember, you know, yeah. when I was drumming in Deeds back in the day, that's what I did. I, ride my bike all the time mm-hmm. to get my legs strong and you know some of the like halfway through reduce i was like okay i'm starting to feel the burn because reduce is just relentless but mm-hmm. i have no doubts that we will we'll be we're gonna be fucking right on track like these songs are it's weird because you don't play the songs for such a long time but it's like etched in your brain mm-hmm. you get behind the kit and you once you play that first riff the entire song just laid out in your mind. Like, oh, I, already know how to I mean, play it's this. funny that you were talking about riding bikes. It's just yeah, like riding a bike. It's totally like that. It's like the muscle memory is there. It's just the, like, I never forgot how to play the songs, but as far as like the stamina is the one thing I need to work on. So, yeah. Other than that, the dam was killer. Like Ivan's shredding the parts. Jacoby, his vocals sounded good. He's getting strong on the bass. He's playing a five string. So it's a little like getting adjusted to that top string because he always played mm-hmm. a four string, but it was fun. We had a three hour jam, dude. Like three hours went by like that. We're like, holy shit. And that's what we used to do back in the day. Dude, that's so funny that you said that because uh I I finally I was telling these guys I finally started listening to some of our episodes because I was like, Mike's coming back, it's been a year. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to that deeds episode and listen to it. And yeah. you guys were saying the same thing back then about what it was like to be together first at, yeah. at, at in the beginning and how uh, a three four hour jam felt like it went by like an hour yeah know? that's because eric was just like always spitting riffs out dude and jacoby's like oh let's let's do it like this and arrange like it was just you know we were young we had all these ideas and you know we just made it it, it was fun and you know in this little town of los osos there wasn't really much to do so it was like just get in there and just get on your kit. And that's, I mean, to, to be honest, like that's but how did you, I feel. Did you channel stamina. that? Did you channel that? Oh, 100%, into the set? 100%. Right. I was thinking about Eric the whole time. I was like, Eric would be said to be like faster, <laughs> come on faster. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> so it was just, it was fun. It was super inspiring. It was like, okay, you know, we can do this. No problem. It's just, it was just fun. You know, it was, it was good. To, and it just reminded me of the days we used to jam out in the little last, you know, jam rooms that we had back in the day. And just, you know, like we would have two to three hour jams minimum. And then some days we jam four hours, you know, and after that, mm-hmm. it'd just be completely white, but it's just like, that's what it took to stay in deed shape was just to play like that. So another thing that you had mentioned in the uh, earlier episode or episodes, um, you may have said it again in the exhum, but I want to touch on it again. You never, you said that you didn't like being in two projects at once. Now you are finally. Yeah. What is that like? Uh, it's well, the only thing that's tough about that is two different styles of drumming, um, mm-hmm. but then the, the balance of schedule. So what's, like with the deeds thing, it's we're playing two festivals. So it's not going to interfere with anything that Exhumed has going on. So that's fine. Um, but yeah, I've never been one of them drummers to like want to just get up my name out there and just get on all these different albums and mm-hmm. projects. So like I'm very loyal to the bands that I'm in because to me, it's a family, it's a bond. It's like I don't want to be known as this, like, you know, totally a drummer, a drummer for are- hire. I want to be known for. This is Mike Hamilton, drummer of Deep. Mike Hamilton, drummer of Exhum. You know what I mean? So now what? Is, that's what I'm saying. Like at now, it's not that. It's you of Deeds of Flesh and Exhumed. Yeah. So like, so well, what, yeah, yeah. What, I'm saying like, what, what? At what point did you say, okay, you know what? I'm gonna let go of that whole. I'm gonna be in one project thing. I'm going to now want to be back in deeds as well. Yeah. Oh, he's on been a, in Exhum long enough where I think that's kind of like kind yeah, of like a family bond too. I would for say. sure. I've like, been in yeah. Exhum since 2011, but I think for me, um, what really made it, I, I want to get on stage with Jacoby again. Yeah. 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 Because Jacoby, when, when he left, it was like, you know, part of that personality of the band left and, you know, everything that he brought to the band. It's like, I want to, I want to just be behind the kit and look forward just and see Jacoby and, you know, also jam with, with Craig and Ivan cause they're both badasses and they put so much work into deeds and it's just going to be an awesome experience to just be on the stage emotional. I'm sure too, but it's like, you know, to be on that stage and just seeing Jacoby, you know, get mm-hmm. to play in front of like Hellfest is no joke, dude. It's like no, five, yeah. five to 10,000 people. I was going to say, I mean? I've seen footage, dude. It's yeah, not so a it's, small crowd. And it's killer. And this year is, just, is very special because they're, doing two weekends back to back and everybody's on this freaking sh- on Fuck. this fest this year man it's crazy <laughs> it's gonna, i know it's gonna be nuts dude it's like but we're playing right before decapitated which is pretty cool well, so when is nice. it when is it um so Hellfest is it's june 24th is the day that we're playing um 2022 yeah okay so we've got yeah. a good six six seven months to get ready for it so there's no doubt in my mind we'll be ready so, so it's like i got six seven months to get a plane ticket i know i just like, <laughs> I literally look at the calendar ready well that. i mean <laughs> let's just hope man that you know the world is ready for international travel because if not it's going to be really a bummer to push everything another year so yeah mm-hmm. And so by that time, who knows, like the whole landscape might even change. I'm, I'm not sure. Man. Do you but, think with like with you playing like in Deeds and Exhum, like if you're playing like so you go from like a, you know, Deeds, Deeds, Deeds mindset and then you go back to Exhum, are you like, are you playing Exhum stuff? And then just turn and go like all of a sudden, like you'll just go like into like fucking Deeds, like random no, land or something. Or do you think you can no, separate your no, mind? Both of them? Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's a it's a discipline. It's like I'm not going to, you know, I mean, when I first joined Exhum, I was some of the shows are playing super fast and match just like we got to bring these tempos down i'm like okay yeah i got a, you know a little excited but now that it's it's just a, sw- a flip a switch you know what i mean there's two different yeah. styles you know and it's um yeah it's it's easy to do it's no problem yeah nice. definitely, definitely i mean think about matt harvey dude he's got like all the projects he's got and that guy yeah. can just he'll sit in front of his computer and write for all the his bands and he'll just go like all right, I'm writing for Exum. Okay, boom, done with that. I'm writing for Pounder. Boop, done with that. He just like switches gears back and forth. It's just kind of like that. You know, you're like, it challenges your mind to also think in a different aspect, you know, of music. So it's kind of cool. I wonder if it's just, yeah, let be somebody who's less naturally scatterbrain a- able to file things into folders sure. and as a hard drive and you're dumb. You, know? you might well, be different like, moods too. Like after work, yeah, you might be like, I'm in totally. an Exhum mood today. Like I yeah. feel like I have this vibe for Exhum today or like another project the next day. Well, think about like KC when he's teaching students, he'll go from one student that wants to learn a certain specific style. And then, you know, next class is a student that wants to learn an entirely different style, like jazz or like, you know, metal or whatever. So it's just like that. It's like, 
once you've been playing music, you know, your whole life, you're like, you know how to turn that switch on and off to, from project to project. And there's a lot of musicians out there doing it. Like Darren Seska is one of them. He, that guy just goes, he just, you know, switches mindsets from one project to the next. And so it's also, you know, it's, it's a discipline for sure. But mm -hmm. is Goratory still a project? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that was like one the, a few yeah. years ago or a couple of years, a few years ago. I think yeah. it's few now pre pandemic. Yeah. Right. Mm hmm. I don't know. I just think like the mindset from exhumed to D is totally different. But it's just like with exhumed, it's for me, it's like a grind death metal band where D is obviously you know tech death, but it's just a lot of fucking double bass, man. <laughs> 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 and I'm thinking to myself, I was like, damn, okay, all right. Well, this song is the whole song's double bass. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, so why did I do that? Like, oh, because I didn't think I would be playing these songs when I'm 50. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> fucking totally. so, oh, you man. know and it's also a challenge yeah. for me man i accept it i'm like i can do this like even in my age like you know I, if fucking Sick. pete sandoval can do it if you know if tim, tom hunting can do it like you know gene hogan all these guys are well in their the 50s canaries in the coal mine dude they're you they plenty of canaries man, in the coal it, mine you know dude. what i mean yeah yeah you and you're doing the exercise stuff and you're keeping your body in shape and well, you're yeah. doing the things that you need yeah. to do i've yeah. always I've been, never been fit. A, you've always I've never been a hard partier i don't like i don't party hard like I've always been pretty active, always doing something physical and, you know, whether it was, you know, in the gym or just riding bike or just doing something outdoors. Yeah. I mean, of course the pandemic has slowed everybody down, but still work out and stuff. So yeah. Nice. It's just, well, speaking of exhumed, you're doing a tour starting this month, right? Correct. In like two weeks, less than two weeks. So we're going out. Um, it's going to be interesting because of covid so we'll see how it goes like uh, we've seen some tours out there that have you know navigated it pretty successfully like the dsi tour mm -hmm. and bleeding i heard that one was pretty good and success and um i don't remember even seeing anybody ever like posting that they got sick or anything like that so um you know we just want first of all we want to be safe keep us safe and keep our fans safe so we're going to do everything that we can to do that mm -hmm. and you know and just get back out and just play shows again so um that's starts october 22nd to november 20th Jeez, so, yeah, one yeah. one week <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, i mean it was the name of the tour is called warming through america so <laughs> <laughs> we warm our way from city to city and you know um we got creeping death uh bewitcher and enforce and those are kind of like some new new bands coming up that are kind of like old school death metal yeah some, like some black thrash and then like some hyper thrash so it's like we always like to make a diverse tour you know where like mm -hmm. one of the bands can always appeal to somebody that's never seen any any death metal you know what i mean so mm -hmm. kind of want to just you know you know are you making I, it to the, I, you're not making it to the bay at all you're going to san diego no the, so. no well we're starting off in like costa mesa and then we're gonna mm -hmm. you know san diego brick by brick and then we're just gonna kind of start making our way over towards um arizona albuquerque i mean we're not playing a lot of major cities on this one we're playing okay. you know some some like cb markets i guess you can mm -hmm. say um, but the last show will be at the um, the Oakland Metro. Oh fuck yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, we always like we always like to end a tour like on a strong note. You know what I mean? Like start on a strong note in California and then end on a strong note in, like Oakland. So it'll be our like our our homecoming show kind of deal. And so did you guys hit up ad for sound at Brick by Brick? You know, I didn't. We. I didn't know if he was busy with other projects, but I mean, I think he you is. Know, you know, always, Ed's always going to be there. And I always just because, tag those two things together, Ed and Brick by Brick. Well, he's for not, sure because yeah. he knows he knows the board, he knows the room. He's a badass yeah. sound guy. Like I've always like every time a band comes through or a tour comes through, he's always there, like showing, you know, the touring sound guy. Like like check it out. These are all the little you know mm -hmm. things you need to know about this board. So he's always been super helpful, and I'd love to take that guy out on the road, man. Hell he's, yeah, dude. yeah, he's a badass sound guy, but. I don't know if we can afford him because he's. <laughs> we're on what a are you going to say, budget. Joseph? He's, what's he doing? Uh, he lives in Inland Empire now. I don't think he's in San Diego. I don't know how often he can make it down to brick uh, by brick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I was going to have him come to my studio and just help us with our sounds. So yeah. nice. Shout out to Ed. Yeah. 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 yeah we cherish your guy. ears, brother, and your and yourself. But you're, oh, yeah. you're awesome. He's one of us. <laughs> very humble human being. Yep. 
Some oh yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I went to Disney. Our families went, well, I, we met in Disneyland together one time. It was yeah. fucking crazy, dude. Like I'm standing in front of the castle of Disneyland with fucking Ed from Discord. <laughs> We're watching our fucking kids fuck with each nice. other and our wives talk to each other. We're just like, dude, what are we doing right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's awesome. Just yeah. a full circle. Yeah, yeah like, totally, man. I wanted to ask you, Mike, about like putting together the like live set that you guys are going to be doing with Deeds. You know? Yeah. And like, um, I mean, I don't know how much you can divulge, but like, are you thinking of like, are you guys going to do like an even spread of all the albums? Or are you thinking of doing yeah. like a bunch of, a lot of old stuff or like, what's your, is there anything? You well, what we wanted to do is like, you know, with any band that has like as many albums as we, it's really hard to always mm -hmm. narrow down. Um, but we like, we pick songs that we enjoy playing. First of all, we pick songs that are crowd favorites and that make sense. Um, so, I mean, for me, like, we always we just kind of went through every album and kind of picked one song that we would want to play and then we just kind of narrowed it down from there and then you know it may actually change we're not really sure because we're like oh well, this song you know we should introduce this song from trading pieces or play this song from crown or whatever so we're just kind of like figuring it out and we only have an hour to play so it's like it's really hard you know to narrow it down to just one hour but i think we're going to play a wide variety for all we're going to play something off of every record and you know that way especially the last three records we haven't haven't even played a single song live ever so those yeah. are gonna be, yeah those are gonna be yeah we never supported of what's to come with the with the tour or That's portals right. yeah so yeah. those are just studio releases so you know so do you think but, if it goes really good like if you you know those festivals go really good that maybe deeds would be kind of like open to being like a festival band and maybe play yes. some Okay. Okay. Yeah. That'll be kind of the goal. I think so. I mean, whatever makes sense, you know, and whatever people have have time for, because everybody's, you know, Craig's super busy. He's got a professional career. Jacoby's got a family professional career and so does Ivan. But yeah, I mean, we're definitely open to the idea of doing, you know, maybe one festival, minimum one festival a year. Um, we'll see how it goes, you know, whatever makes sense. And if, you know, everybody has, can get the time off, that'd be great to be able to do that, you know? Exactly. Totally. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. I thought, you, I thought you were going to talk. <laughs> hey, it's okay to have a short pause. Joel yeah, we can pause, hates the yeah. pauses. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm all ADD with the pauses. Yeah. I heard the Must pause. keep content. I, heard, we I was need sitting content. back keep down. Keep the content going. Yeah. I was sitting back down and I, I heard the time pause stamp the headphones. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just erase. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, no, as far as uh, yeah. Zoom, so the writing and stuff, is that is that still, that's full motion? Everything's going good with that? And then... Yeah, we actually, during the pandemic, we like... <laughs> so crazy like we had we put out horror and we played one one tour for the last record and we're just like well we matt's not a guy that just likes to sit around and just wait see what happens like so he had a whole nother album you know and that he was been working on songs he's always creating songs always writing and stuff so yeah um i think in like may i yeah may mark no march of this year i flew out and we recorded another record it's already done sitting at sitting at relapse waiting Nice. So we're well, I'm not sitting at relapse. We're we're still dealing with the artwork and getting everything, all the layout and everything, but it's done. And we're hoping to release something, you know, beginning of next year. So we'll see. We'll see the timing of it. I mean, I'm not really like I'm not at liberty to really talk about when it's gonna be released, but we it's done and it's yeah, it's gonna come out next year. So but, nice. uh, yeah. Are you, you gonna, gonna just keep busy? You know. Are you gonna play any of those new, new, new ones on the show? Uh, we're gonna play one new, new one. Yeah. And Sweet. then we're gonna. We, we, I mean, like I said, we only toured once for horror, so you know yeah. we're gonna introduce some songs. You know, two or three songs from that record, and then uh, mm -hmm. try to cover that. And then, yeah. So it's gonna feel good to get out and play again for sure. And you know, the the Costa Mesa show. I'm not living down in Orange County right now, but that's like so close to my house down there and i was like yeah. i've never i've never heard of a metal show happening at that venue before and i hope that it stays as, as a, men, a metal venue or a place yeah. where metal shows happen that would be cool yeah, yeah. i don't know but, i'm not familiar with it myself but yeah, yeah. I mean, listen if they got a stage and you know they've got people show up let's do it That's yeah I'm <laughs> telling all my and friends SoCal's in the neighborhood always good out. yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure yeah. so cal's yeah. always got decent fucking turnouts yeah compared to a lot of places you know yeah no we've always done really good in california no matter what and it's usually like and you just like came up joseph 
you would have been you just came up like not too long yeah. ago right yeah for for the fall i'm in santa cruz otherwise i would be right there like super yeah. close yeah um but hey mike i wanted to ask because we had dennis from spawn of possession on oh yeah it's been a few months now and he was talking about i guess a tour that you were the tour manager for yeah i, guess- I watched his episode dennis is awesome dude <laughs> fucking love dennis dude yeah, yeah he's so cool uh, we got we got some possible uh, re re bringing of of spawn people back on, which we're stoked to yeah, nice. get to do later. Awesome. Um, cool. But yeah, we'll divulge more. And we'll divulge more. Cool, man. But uh, yeah, man, I just wanted to ask, like, how often were you, uh, you know, tour managing? Was that like when Unique Leader would like sponsor or book a tour, and you were working? Yeah, with them? that was yeah. well, that was just one time. Um, okay. So we got uh, it was. It was Gorgasm, Spawn of Possession, Pyemia, and I think, was it Vile? I think it yeah. was. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so no, you ta- uh, you yeah. ta- Gorgasm, Spawn of Possession, Pyemia, Severed Pyemia. Savior. Oh, Severed Savior. Yeah. That's right. My bad. My bad. Severed. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> it was it's been a while. But There's yeah, a lot um, of tours in that dome, bro. I know, that dude. Freshly so shaved many. dome. I know. Yeah, totally. Nice and glowing. <laughs> but yeah. So Eric booked that tour and he got the guys from Spawn of Possession come over and it was cool because we had Pimey and Spawn of Possession all out at the ranch in Osos. We we rehearsed at this. Yeah, it was out there, ranch. dude. Yeah, and so we're all out there barbecuing and stuff and getting all ready for that. Um, that was fun, dude. Yeah, it was cool. It was for me. I was. It was. Challenging. What was that place? What was that slow uh, venue that you guys played at or that that uh, tour played at? It was a really uh, it, small one. Yeah, it was Slow Brew. Was the name dude, it that. had like pillars in the middle of the room. Yes. Yeah, and, it was like the uh, old stone. It had like a small the, little stage. The famous, the famous story for Dan Kenny is that he literally probably got a concussion that night. We never took him to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> somebody there, there was pitting going on, and somebody yeah. grabbed his arm and did a three sixty swing on him like yeah. full force, and then it just was perfect right into one of those pillars, dude. Just I know Dan it's, Kenny. That, that, right that's out, happened right, so dude. many times. I've seen so many metal shows there that people just. I've seen people dive off the stage right into it. It's like, oh, oh dude. Ouch. it's yeah. like right there in the middle of the fucking. I like, know. Yeah. Slim's had them too. Slim's had those pillars like right. Yeah, but this pit. is yeah. a, like take like a maybe a sixth of the space of Slim's. And yeah, put m- like the same amount of pillars. I remember yeah. Slim's would have like security guards just like manning the pillars, like to make sure that, <laughs> that no one fucking runs into the pillars just for like insurance purposes. You know? Yeah, right. They should have just wrapped it with like the wrestling mat, like they do with the MMA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. no, they just put a small little place to put your beers on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a field goal out. pole, like a field, yeah. like around the field goal post. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, um, it, it was. I was young. I did. I never tour managed at all, so it was my responsibility to like keep the bands and the bands in line, which was, <laughs> not, <laughs> yeah, not not even possible. Was everybody on the same bus? Everybody was on the same bus, dude. It was brutal. Uh, yeah, Jesus. it was crazy. We were sleeping in the front lounge and the back lounge, like all the bunks were taken and the driver, um, he had, I, I don't know how Eric brokered this deal to get the driver to put all the fucking, all the band members on one bus. We were pulling a trailer as well, but I mean, that was a fun one and it got to a point where like, so the spawn of possession guys, you know, I guess, beer is really expensive over in, in uh, Sweden. So when they got to the U S and they saw how cheap beer was, they're like freaking out. <laughs> so they're yeah. like loading up. Like it's a pandemic. You know what I mean? They're like <laughs> every day. They're just like, dude, it's so cheap. I can't believe it's so cheap. And they would just drink their flesh off, dude. It was oh, so crazy. Shit. But um, that was a fun tour, man. There was a lot of good stories. It was like so many crazy, like I, Dennis was talking about the show in Houston where those two gangbangers came in and I saw him. I like, dude, those guys are trouble. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but that was fun. It was just crazy. Cause it's just like the whole, all those fuckers on one bus. And it was just like, it was just imagine that just that, wild. Those, yeah. All those bands. dude. Yeah. And then, you know, like the guys in spawn possession, they were just drinking. Like it was just like holiday, you know, every day yeah. and then they would get up and crush their set. It's like amazing. So who was, was cool. who was doing double duty for Pyme? Was Dennis drumming for Pyemia that? Uh, no, that no. was uh, Robbie V. Robbie, oh, no, v. Robbie K. I'm sorry, Robbie, Robbie K. K. That's right, yeah, Robbie, Robbie K. Singer, yeah. right? Uh, no, Robbie, v's... Robbie V. 
Yeah, Robbie oh, V was please. drumming. Robbie, um, yeah, that was Paimia. So it was just a okay. four piece. Yeah. Fuck. And yeah, so there was yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of it was a lot of crazy crazy nights. And the one thing is Jonas, the, the old singer with dreads for Pawn of Possession, he chewed dip right in those little mm-hmm. packets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he would throw it in the toilet. This is I remember this. He'd throw it in the toilet. On the bus. On the bus, and you're not supposed to put any paper or any solid yeah. waste or anything I mean, in the yeah, toilet because yeah. it clogs up the lines. So the driver, I think his name was Kevin. He was like, I don't know which one of you fuckers keep putting the, the skull bandits in the toilet, but stop doing that. And I think Jonas, that guy at the time, the singer, I don't know if he was a hired gun or he was somebody that, that was yeah. new. Mm-hmm. He he was a little a little over arrogant. You know what I mean? He was a little pompous. Yeah. He didn't feel like he didn't want to be told what to do or nothing like that. He did it again. And his, his, the, the driver was like, man, I'm going to fucking charge you guys 250 bucks if you do it again. And so he did it again and they ended up charging him for a good. The poor driver was in there trying uh, to unplug it and there's all that piss in there and just the line uh, popped and piss got all over uh, his arm and shit. <laughs> And I could hear him out there screaming. Because the, yeah, oh, if it was regular dip without the fucking packet, it probably would just dis, you know dissolve yeah, away. It, it's, well, it would all just sit at the bottom of the tank. You know what I mean? And he had to eventually clean it out, but you're not supposed to put any solid waste nah. in it at all. So yeah, it was just. But I mean, overall, the the tour was super fun. Those guys were all just. It was just amazing to watch those guys play every night because they're amazing musicians. And mm-hmm. Gorgasm killed it, of course, and Paimia killed it. It was just a really like everybody had you know just. At their prime and just I owned really well. I owned that Ibanez that uh Jonas was playing that tour for a little bit and then yeah. it disappeared. Uh, we had some people that were uh you know going in and out of uh our rehearsal studio and it disappeared. Uh, oh damn but it was the bass, the bass? I literally bought no, it was a seven string guitar. Oh shit. Yeah, I bought it off Dusty. For like 250 bucks. I was like, dude, I don't even know how to play guitar, but dude, that's the spawn of possession guitar. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> nah, yeah, that was that I was, was like, I was like, that's gonna make me start playing electric guitar because I had an acoustic guitar at home. I could play some chords and shit. Yeah. I was like, maybe this will be my way to start like trying to fucking actually play. And then no, it's gone. Dude. After that spawn of possession episode, I got uh, hit up by um Rob from uh Whistle Pig, I think it is, but the studios that w- it was recorded in. And uh, he's like, I still got that amp, dude. And I was like, dude, wow. that, it's a Mesa Triaxis that they uh, recorded with uh, for a cabinet and stuff. And I was like, I just want it just to like have in my pos- possession. <laughs> 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 and uh, he's all let it? you know. And I'm like, Fuck, I want to spawn my possession of this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, I just want that. Like, a p- it's like that would be the like one of the most like important pieces of like death metal gear history stuff. Just for, for me, sure. like. Being an old man and being like, dude, this is the fucking thing. You know, so it's like having like you, a Mike, you being around and and all these new bands coming into the unique leader fold, like what was your first impression of uh, impression of spawn of possession? Who that's a hard one to say. Yeah. Well, years. I mean, you know, back then everything was just so raw and all the bands that were coming up were all just fucking badass in their own way but there's two bands that eric signed that maybe when we listened to the demo i like actually turned and looked at the fucking speakers like what the fuck am i hearing <laughs> and one was psychroptic, psychroptic. Except were the ancients mm-hmm. and the other one yeah. was spawn of possession cabinet yeah i was just yeah. like i like it's you know that sometimes you'll hear one of the records and just like you catch a little bit of it but you have to listen to it two or three times to really yeah. like digest everything that's happening yeah so, yeah that was and, and, and be, having a seasoned ear and still having Psychroptic hit it and be yeah. like, whoa, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. This is how Aussies do it, dude? Yeah. It's just because it was just a rare formula that you haven't heard before, you know, in music. It was they're doing something completely different, you know, where Spawn, it was just like so busy, but also so groovy at the same time. It's like, wow, they're mm-hmm. doing, you know, there's a lot to it, a lot of layers to it, especially, you know, yeah. you know, after seeing those guys live, it's like, it's just, it's amazing that they all got, you know, it, somehow they all found each other, jailed as musicians, and wrote that material and recorded it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just crazy. Same with Psychroptic. You know, it's just like the brothers are always pushing each other. You can see that, but just the, you know, all the records that they have put together. But when I heard Scepter of the Ancients, and I was like, Eric, you have to sign this band. And then I heard Cabinet, like, dude, mm-hmm. call them right now and fucking <laughs> sign yeah. this band. And yeah. That's so funny, man. That's and those two bands, I think that's yeah. kind of like that set the pace for the future of Unique Leader. Like this is the mm-hmm. this is standing. I agree. Here's, here's the bar right here. For you sure. Know? Yeah. 
Well, me and Dan, like I, like I've said, said this before, but like I was like hanging out with him like way back before we like knew you guys at all, before we were on Unique Leader, any of that stuff, and uh, we like went to the like the website that had all the clips, like you could do like sound clips and stuff. Yeah. And for us, like those were the exact same two bands. We were like Spawn of Possession and yeah. Psychroptic. So we we heard of those on our own, I guess, even before we, we met you, Joel. I guess now, how to realize it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. It's crazy hearing yeah. like the the Dave Haley. How they that that oh, scepter was pretty much like recorded as like a a live jam pretty much on analog. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's like I, and, and he's like I fucked yeah. up so much. I'm like, dude, and he's, those fuck ups are human and they're fucking not fuck ups at all. Yeah. Playing they're Pearl beautiful. Eliminator they're pedals, happy, happy like, accidents. Yeah, yeah. No, and that yeah, that was crazy Insane. too. That guy was playing those old fucking Pearl Eliminators, and I was sitting there watching them play live, and he'd be going yeah. from blasting to right into those turbo double bass like i'm like how does he even it's just like flips a switch and he's into that double bass it's so yeah. crazy it's crazy same with dennis man dennis was like watching him play he had such a refined you know way that he played he didn't use a ton of energy moving around the kit but he he was just really controlled and refined with his movements there's that right. one video of him playing uh i think murray was even the one filming it but it's him playing uh it's pretty one of the more i guess famous uh, pieces of uh, drum footage just one possession but it's yeah him playing um uh, church of deviance on yeah. um on on the bloodletting tour and like it's like fat it's like faster than the fucking album it's just like yeah. he's like just all he's just like <laughs> his his body style is just like just all super like still and his arms just yeah. going like, it's like super fucking locked in like and you can hear the music in the back and they're just all click yeah. i remember seeing that shit i was like that was like almost my like death metal cry moment because i was like obsessed yeah. with them and then when i like bought like i told this before but i bought tickets like six months in advance thinking like <laughs> this is gonna sell out they're gonna be fucking huge well blah, blah, blah. like i got the tickets like the second they went on sale and all the things and just watched them and was just like this is like the most insane shit and they just nailed it live well, let's you know? talk about let's talk about well, real to quick watch about- dennis play live he was one of the first drummers that i actually watched witness live using the finger technique because before yeah, the, then, the- i'm just like you know, drummers would just crow mag. You just fucking swing your arms and do whatever technique you can, you know, refine to get the notes out. But he was just so controlled and so precise with his movements. I was like, okay, that was something new that I haven't seen before. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, when you're at a show, you're a dude, you're in a metal fucking atmosphere and you do feel like you're going to cry. dude. All of us have felt that. No, I'll, you, I'll you watch out. one band where you're like, "Fuck, dude!" I, right, this I interview is over. Cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm crying with like a smile on my face because I'm like, it's "No, like I know." Too it's much, like super. It's, it's super too joyful. much excitement that like you're just like it's so much like your 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 nerves and everything are just like overwhelmed with how sick it is that you're just like mm-hmm. all of a sudden like you're like smiling going like this and there's just like a a thing coming out. You're like, "Shit!" It's like a. It's not like a. It's not like a sad. It's like a fucking happy like the first time I saw cynic was that I got that feeling multiple times through their set, dude, because I had been so in tune with focus. And then I'm finally seeing like, I think it might have been them playing focus all the way through. And yeah, plus after that, they did some other like, you know, encore shit that with like the EP that they did and traced a few songs um but yeah dude you it, you get overwhelmed with emotion that's what it yeah, is it's, it's start for me it where it's it started, okay it, metal guys in, you can fucking, fucking feel that like emotion, the, dude. We, we like to talk about our feelings here on no the mike's gonna rip me apart on this one um, for me it's, <laughs> are you that's where I, I don't cry when i get goosebumps so that's yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like you it's get like the a, chills down your neck and the goosebumps it's like ah that's fucking that's real right there where it started with me mike is uh you know because you know I've been watching football my whole life and when like seeing like a sick play when I was a kid or something like it would just be like watching dude running for a 99 yard touchdown like that's so sick you know like (laughs) that like all of a sudden you just like like a tear would come out but you're like oh my god that's the sickest fucking thing I've ever seen you know that's that's like that's your mindset but then they're like your eyes are getting like like excited too you know yeah dude i just i literally just had this pop in my head right now excited (laughs) yeah yeah eye boners they're eye boners and when his eyes get excited they sweat a lot it's okay. It's okay to get in touch with your promotions, man. Just let it out. Oh, totally. But this this conversation is actually bringing. This is great. You're on the fucking podcast, yeah. and I literally am getting this pop in my head yeah. right now because of everything that we've been talking about tonight. We talked about Las Vegas Metal Fest. I got Mike Hamilton on the podcast with me right, right now. Uh, I went and flew to a Las Vegas Death Fest, and who was the headliner that weekend? It was Suffocation, and you were nice. there with me, dude. You remember 
that it was the first, it was like the first run of Suffo coming back. So I remember being back in Vegas, it's hot as fuck in the summer, dude, but Suffo's headlining, dude. You were there, no doubt, because I followed you into the pit, dude. You got to remember this with me, dude. You were You're there. talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you, Mike. Dude. Yeah. Oh, shit. So man. you remember this? Remember this a, show? He always has a twin, though, right? He has a twin. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> dude, okay. You were in Vegas. This is not a fucking dream. You, I fall, I, you were the reason why I pitted with Suffo after like not pitting. I was what, venue, what venue was this? It was uh, some fucking shithole. Fuck, dude. When was uh, like? Remember, let's think about like when Suffo was coming back. So they did. Right. Ireland was like their first one. Five, four. Well, two thousand four was Suffo coming back at Maryland. Oh, I th- I know. I remember. Oh man, it was like a t- little. It was a venue on the outskirts of town. It wasn't. Yes, even- it wasn't near no. the strip. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Out. You're yeah. out of in the fucking boonies and in, in yeah. the desert, dude. It was yeah. definitely. I remember that show. I remember. Yeah, I. You yeah. know, I'll tell you the one thing right now that gives me goosebumps every time I see it is when Boyer grabs that bass and stands it up, dude. Mm. I'm just like nobody fucking does that. <laughs> but Boyer, he just fucking just stands that shit up and just bangs like. So that makes, that makes you that makes you cry. <laughs> no, that was, I mean, I'm talking it doesn't about make me cry. It gives goosebumps, me goosebumps dude. in my tear ducts, right? And no, <laughs> <laughs> goosebumps in my tear ducts. <laughs> no, dude. I'm saying that's one of those like hair stands up, like yeah, yeah, goosebump moments. Yeah, totally. Oh, oh shit, dude, that's great. I'm trying to find the stuff following you into the pit. Vegas that show. was a goose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, me, dude, dude. I was like, sure. shit, Mike Hamilton's going into that circle. Dude. Yeah, I'm I follow him in. Well, dude, dude I mean, Suffo, if it wasn't for Suffo, like a lot of us wouldn't be here, man, to be honest. Oh, they're, yeah. They're dude. one of the first bands we like totally pushed like the envelope. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For, yeah for Pierce me, from Within I mean, is the yeah, most cited album I, on this well, podcast, yeah. dude. When I heard Effigy, because I didn't hear uh, the first EP yet, I heard Effigy. And I was just mm-hmm. like, dude, this is insane. This is what I want to do. Hell yeah, dude. That, that's that's one of those that like, that's you know with the favorite drummers, you know, it's like Mike Smith, dude. Innovator, hard hitter, fucking humble human being, just like just, nobody does it like he does it, man. Yeah. Dude, and yeah, for sure. Terrence being on the show, like I gotta do a quick oh, yeah, tag Terrence, on fifty two since it was just a couple episodes ago. It's just like yeah. dude, that's such a pinnacle for this podcast, dude. Like yeah, being able to have that dude on for fifty, that's perfect, dude. Yeah. And, and yeah. I'd lo- I'd love to have him back on for more though. It was cool yeah. actually that one of my favorite parts of the podcast was asking or when one of us asked him, like, as far as like, you know, because death metal was a thing, like, you know, they were they were up in the scene and stuff like that doing their own thing but like i was like what made you guys like take it to like a the level that ha- it hadn't been taken to yet and and just hearing him talk about how him and cerrito were into like classical shredding music and stuff that like really was pushing the boundaries of stuff and just like on the more technical side and they're like dude we should bring this into the fucking death metal and that like and then yeah. hearing how that came and that influenced like this you know this podcast if that never if that thought was never a thought, I mean, who knows if this even is even this wouldn't be a sitting thing, here. dude. Like yeah. we're not even sitting here. Probably, the whole you know? path that got us to this podcast is mainly because of bands like that, at least, you know, not yeah. just stuff gave but just like maybe Pyrexia. You know, found, don't forget about Pyrexia, dude. dude Sermon Sermon mockery. Yeah. Yeah. Sermon so mockery. Yeah. Fucking yeah. sick, dude. They're like, you know, they were doing the same thing Suffa was doing. So it was just mm-hmm. just different flavor, you know. I mean, uh, anybody who's listening to this who knows Suffo but doesn't know that album should fucking start yeah. hitting the books, dude. Yeah, for sure. They, they, yeah, do. It, they do. But no, that album is fucking sick. And I got an original copy, bitches. You guys are buying nice. that shit for like 150 bucks on eBay. I had that shit way back when it was like $15 or some shit, dude. <laughs> Yeah, the sermon's class. Damn, uh, <laughs> uh, dude, drink. I take a yeah, uh, sip yeah. after that, dude. Yeah, yeah. well, I'm like, dude, I'm getting drunk. Mike's coming on, on the podcast. One, I'm gonna get a little drunk, dude. So, <laughs> so Mike, uh, <laughs> so like, I think you said before on on like the deeds episode that like the songs off in breeding are like the hardest to play. Kind of is that they, true? Yeah, they are in the just the just the way that Brad dr- his drumming on that record is mm-hmm. just so unorthodox. It's just like frantic. It's very frantic. It's very all yeah. over the place. And so you know, there was, 
Yeah, no, it's great. I mean, it's like that album to me way ahead of its time, at least yeah. at least five yeah. years ahead of its time. It came out in 98, dude. And I just remember we were on tour. It was Vile and Deeds and, and they had just recorded it and they had it on CDR and they just kept spinning it in the fucking band. And I was just like, this is insane. What the hell's going on? And Colin is just lo- is losing his mind up front. Like, just like ah, get him up. I'm just like, just totally into it. Like, this is crazy. Like I was trying to crunching all the numbers and just listen to all the transitions it's just mm-hmm. yeah it's it's a great album man can i have you just say that album title all the way through because i just called it inbreeding no it's inbreeding the anthropophagi <laughs> anthropophagi oh, see, he said it wrong a yeah. guy or jai guy anthropophagi guy yeah about, yeah inbreeding the anthropophagi it could anthropophagi. be anthropophagi guy <laughs> it, it basically means inbreeding the cannibalism and breeding the puffy okay. guy, dude. Yeah. Breeding the cannibals, <laughs> like people. That? Cannibalism or cannibals, yeah, something like that. That's a inbred one of cannibals people. that keep inbreeding. And Cannibalizing the people. inbred. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so wait, they crazy. eat each other and fuck each so they, other. So it's like they're oh, they all eat, they eat themselves, by their themselves yeah. and then they <laughs> yeah. fuck oh, each shit. other. And make, That's yeah. dark. I get Whoa, it. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I never knew all that about that. Yeah. That's insane, yeah. dude. Cool. That's like, Dude, you so got to pick up with the source, man. So that's, so what's that's trading the, that's pieces the about? Metal, uh, what's that? What's trading pieces about? Like body parts? Um, that one's kind of random. Um, I think it's more about Reese's just, pieces and like. Well, no, no, I was thinking. I was thinking like no, I, it's, it's we lost like, really hard in blackjack one night, dude. Like, yeah, no, <laughs> trading it's, pieces. It's more about. I mean, I don't know because I wasn't there when they wrote it. That's probably more of a Jacoby question. But my interpretation mm. of it is basically like when they first started writing about horror films and you know um, serial killers and stuff like that. So it's just kind of like the darker human condition kind of thing, you know. So yeah, yeah. So I don't yeah. know. How, I, I I can't really be. Give so an honest answer about what, that one. What's Path of the Weakening about? <laughs> Path of the Weakening is about the Donner Party. Ah, yeah. Yes. Oh, on sure. Donner Pass. Yeah. For sure. Fuck yeah. It's, wow. it's definitely inspired yeah. from that, yeah, the that 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 story of struggle and, and mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. cannibalism and survival. Again, cannibalism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing a yeah. theme. Mm-hmm. Are you seeing a theme, right? Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. it's just like the darker side of the human condition. You know, you're mm-hmm. you're set in these like really, you know, isolate you know, mountains, it's cold, you're freezing. It's like you're getting to a point where people are dying. You have to survive. So, and you become more animalistic, you become more animalistic, beat off, you know, the dead. And that's kind of a, you know, that's what the whole theme of death metal was all about. You know what I mean? Those darker stories and those crazy, like serial killer moments and all that shit. So, so Donner yeah. pass now it's, it's going to be path of the weakening when I go, yeah. that's like, that's like a fucking cursed fucking, well, like yeah. pass, oh, the dude. Donner, the Donner yeah. pass. Like every time, like there's been times where I'm like, that, I'm like, yeah. let's just go. Like I'd be in Sacramento. I'm like, let's just go see the show in in Reno, whatever. Let's just go. And yeah. then just random snowstorm, random. Everyone has to have chains. Mm-hmm. Like I'm mm-hmm. fall, like slipping every. It's like it basically was like it's always been the hardest place to get through. I mean, Jersey Turnpike sucked yeah. with, with the fucking you know trailer and a, no blinkers, which we had sure. once. But, but like yeah. as far as like the Donner Pass has always been the fucking sketchiest place. Like it's like yeah. haunted. Dude. It's like if there's one thing haunted. that Mother Nature doesn't give, she doesn't give a shit. Well, you got to know. Totally. She's exactly. going to see Dream Theater. Well, you're in a fucking crash, bitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She ain't got time for your problems, son. <laughs> yeah, no, it was based on the Donner Party and just a bunch of different random stories and stuff like, you know. Damn, that makes all the sense now. We yeah, I mean, jokes. the cover is basically like three yeah. old dudes trying to get yeah. through. You that's know, what I'm saying. Yeah. It's all coming together now. Yeah, and John Zig did that cover, which that would be a great first guest to have on your podcast. I would I love guess. to have Oh, yeah, for sure. We'll get him on. Once yeah. you brought that up, I was like, dude, yeah, we should definitely yeah, be John standing the man, dude, for artists, sure. Dude. Yeah. And Zig would definitely be the first. For sure. Dude, because because yes, it's his, and also art, it's his artwork that made me buy so many fucking CDs. Yeah, like, well, the, he was like, you know, working with Unique Leader and Eric. And so he was doing a lot of stuff for all the Unique Leader bands because he was our go to guy because he was everything that you threw at him. He just like nailed it. So and it was like, oh, dude, going out on tour, you go through Texas, you stop and get a you stop and get some, Yeah, you stop and get some ink, too, for sure. Yeah. How yeah. many how many zig pieces do you have on your body? Um, uh, well, everything that's black and gray essentially is, you know, zig. I got this sleeve here. This is zig. I got a piece across my chest, piece on my back. Nice. Yeah. This, this arm is, is all zig. So I got the inside, as you can see, I got to fill that all up. So 
Hopefully, gotta that, that's a bucket list item for me for sure, dude. Is yeah. to have a Zig tattoo. And one of my favorite memories was going and stopping by Zig's with uh with suffocation, and uh, we were like fucking just three shit. It was like me, Frank, Terrence, and someone decrepit, and we're just there and like fucking. It was right when FaceTime had just started, so like we're FaceTiming someone from New York with like Terrence and fucking like Frank's just wasted. And just tatting this guy, like just not even know what he's saying. <laughs> Zach just, like, uh, just hands him the gun, and he's just all like, "I don't fucking know what's going on." He's just, he's just yeah. fucking tatting, like just not even knowing. He's like trying to fill in a line. It's just, oh like, my God. like, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Who was the recipient of that tattoo? <laughs> I don't even. Some random dude. I don't have oh, no wasn't even wow. like a Suffo fan. Like a no, Suffo fan could be like, dude, was, that line was fucking Frank. No, it was a Suffo fan. It was like a crew of people. I think it was. Oh, okay. Like he was just all, yeah, man, fucking. He wanted fucking Frank to tat tattoo on him so he just handed him the gun frank's like i've never done this before i'm just like fucking just starts like just filling in lines and shit nice yeah that was that was a you know whenever you're on tour and you're in in austin texas you had to stop yep. at zigs man let's like we would have to row shambo to see okay who gets to go this time yeah you know because you don't have a certain amount of time you only have don't... like a few yeah you know yeah. within maybe four or five hours is your window of opportunity so you got to you know so jacoby's you got can... something by him eric had a few pieces by him and i've got my whole sleeve in my chest and my back so us oh, sick dude. yeah because you've been through multiple more times after deeds too did you ever yeah get... I've, I've gone through with uh exhumed a couple nice. times yeah anybody so... from exhumed got a uh, zig work? uh no uh-uh. no no i mean they would but it's just like at the time it's just like i was like sorry i get like dude that's my homie i got first dibs dude first dibs dude for sure check out all yeah. this shit fucking and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And zig always does a killer he's like he always makes time for me and it's like you know always at least gives me like four hours and i was like all right let's just go for it whatever you can and i never like i just trust him like here's my arm that's what it is dude dude. with tattoos it's like you you kind of you have an artist that you know you can trust yeah because then you can just relax as much as you can while it's happening and mine was jeff pickens he's down in visalia now so it's hard for me to get down there and get a piece done you know with yeah. the kids you'll just the sit there and just be like that's a part that's blowing my mind right now so you because for me like it has to be i have nothing because i like i'm so so specific about what i want and like it keeps changing and, it like, hurts every everywhere but it, it there's per- parts that well i'm saying no not that much. but i'm saying you're the talking part about like, actually deciding on a piece that you live yeah, on your body saying, uh, ever. okay like mike just sits there and goes like fuck it just go yeah, like that, because that, that way w- you know you're getting in the moment. You're you're living in that moment with John Zig. He's gonna create something. It's gonna be sick. You know you're gonna yeah. get something sick because mm-hmm. he's fucking uh, a master at what he does, and he's just gonna. Well, this arm right here is uh, Ron Earhart. You know, oh, so damn. he's like full on like biomech. He's out of San Jose mm-hmm. as well. Awesome tattooist. Is he still there? Uh, awesome guy. Yeah, he's still there. Yeah, he, okay, he's cool. Awesome human nice. being. Awesome, awesome drummer right. too. He jams in a band called Symbiotic. But, oh yeah, um, yeah. They actually yeah. symbiotic just hit me up like a week ago to what up? <laughs> yeah. Oh, those guys oh, yeah, are sick, dude. man. I mean, yeah. I've been trying to get them on Unique Leader. I don't know um what's going on with them. I mean, I know they're writing new material, but it's like they're kind of like on a, either on a hiatus or so they're just not as busy as I would like them to be because we had them play uh open the show for um Exum back in the day, and it was awesome mm-hmm. to see those guys play. And, but yeah, so it's just you know, you gotta get a zig, gotta get him get some art on it. I understand your thing, like you just can't make a decision. Totally. Like to, because it's yeah, but that's that's the whole But I want it to be it, like I want know? it to be like a half sleeve to start off. I'm not gonna go like there's not gonna be like a small thing. It's gotta be like a, a humongous piece like to start yeah. off. Cause I'm not gonna I just I just see like cool sleeves and stuff like that, and I'm like, that's cool. I don't want like a symbol or something. I don't want a butterfly. It on has my back. to be meaningful to you, yeah. bro. So you really yeah, gotta yeah. look into yourself and, and it if you really look deep, you'll probably just end up with KC Chief, they Kansas just, City Chiefs. All Joel, Joel, Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, Joel, over, Joel just shows up one podcast, just his neck just covered, and he's like, Welcome. "Yeah, <laughs> that's what that's, that's what, what I heard figured on. it out, guys." I spent, I spent <laughs> that's what I hear. How the that's yeah. how I hear tattoos go. Tattoos go with the the first yeah. thing, and then like you get it's, the, it is addicting. I, it's addicting. Very yeah, for sure. I'd like to also shout out my friends real quick. So just two go artists, real fast. So uh, we're talking about tattoos. So if you're in Portland, Oregon, check out Adam Friedman. He also did oh, the artwork yeah. on the newest Odious album. Oh, yeah. From dude, 2020. He's, dude, he's so Adam Friedman, demand. check him out on, on Instagram, right. Iron Glacier. Yeah. Dude. Dude, Again, Iron Glacier has like, yeah. I'm not even kidding you. Iron Glacier has yeah. like a half a million followers. Yeah, like yeah. they're like, dude, no. his they're shit humongous. is so mind blowing. Like the oh, way yeah. I've never he seen art like stuff. his. Yeah. So that's totally. why no, I, would so, I was totally pieces, in it. For sure. Yeah. So Adam Friedman in Portland, Oregon, uh, Iron Glacier on Instagram. Yeah. 
And then also my friend Ryan Brasita here in, in uh, Encinitas, California, down here in San Diego in North County, he uh, he has actually purchased the business and, and has taken over uh, 454 Tattoo, which is right next to Lou's Records, where Travis oh, from Cattle yeah. Decapitation worked Used for work. a very yeah, long shit. time. Yeah, right next door. We're doing a show. Our f- and uh, medieval share times, this real quick. dude. Um, yeah, so here's the flyer. You guys, see yes, it? look at it, that. So, medieval it's times, I'm just gonna so it's so okay. He doesn't have to talk about it so I can actually talk about it as a fan. So, it's like, um, it's fucking like epic, fucking like kind of slower Iron Maiden y kind of like epic. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like oh, the epic a, parts of Iron Maiden, yeah, slowed down and and, and it makes we, you just it makes you just put your hand like this the whole time is what you're yes. gonna do. But this is from 2004. We haven't done a show in 17 years, so it's like this thing. I play guitar in it with my friend yeah. Aaron, and then Aaron. we just have a scroll. My, our, our friend Matt, scroll who, reader, re, reads he from better, a scroll. He yeah. better read from the scroll, dude. Yeah, yeah. And then it blew uh, my mind the first time I saw it. It blew my mind. I remember like it was like we're gonna yeah. play a party like our fun band, and I was like, there, like you guys are fucking. And all you hardcore listeners yeah. were talking about a show at the Thunderdome. Did you? Did, did so, you see anyways, to to make it clear, if anyone wants to come check it out, yeah, um, yeah, Where's it's it on my Instagram, and uh, it's at uh, four four fifty four Tattoo in Encinitas, California. Encinitas, uh, November sixth. Uh, yeah, like Saturday. Um, and there's like three bands. Also, my, my friend Ray, Parasitic Existence, he plays in a band that that's like a local San Diego death metal band. Oh, sick. Um, okay. And I didn't even know about them until recently. But Ray's an old friend who played with Josh and all these dudes and back and David back in the in the day in high school and crust bands, crust punk, all that kind of stuff, metal, Hell all yeah. that. And you know, so anyways, yeah, yeah shout check out, it out to those Let, guys. Get yeah. down Not just because I love Casey to death, tattoo. But like, yeah yeah 454 tattoo and Zanitas, but like i literally like yeah would see like fucking you guys play and just have the best time <laughs> like i was like yeah. you guys need to do something with this band like this is it's it so, uh, so it made so, it made everybody it brought the energy of the whole room it was, up it's to a like, party yes, band it's like a yes yeah you yeah. had another it's iron beer. maiden just like fucking <laughs> it's yeah, like yeah, iron yeah. maiden no. riffs with scroll reading and like medieval yeah. rock <laughs> Mike, and like dude, shit dude, dude, they, they just randomly it's like, our went, band from 2004 and we just we basically did some shows and then i joined yeah. decrepit and that was the end but okay. it was what'd like, you wear you done a show in seven years or did you wear just like no just like you'll see but not like that no we didn't dress up like that no no but anyways, oh, okay. yeah, it's, well, no, it's had like, like a, a party white band. shirt. You had a white shirt yeah. with like ri- like drawn. You have to get some nice footage well, so we can like, be do new a ones. recap. We have nice. new ones being drawn up, and yeah, it's no, it was sick. Like I said, I'm not less like hyping it up because Casey's. Is one there of any footage friends. on I YouTube heard, of it? Of the I, shows, heard, or? I, I heard. There, I heard that the, that the the singer is going to do some medieval banter at the crowd, like 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 heckling <laughs> he the crowd in medieval that, banter. He was so good, dude. It's going to be good, dude. It's going to be silly. It's the same guy, right? What's his name? Yeah, Matt. Yeah, Matt, dude. Dude, that's awesome, dude. Like a character at a Renaissance fair or something. Oh, yeah. It's totally. Yeah, you guys could play Ren fairs. Totally, you totally could play <laughs> Ren fairs. But we're, we're we don't like spend money. Like it's like if, if we're gonna do that, shit's made out of like cardboard and like you know, tin foil and stuff. <laughs> yes. Like we're not gonna like actually spend. Money. We're not like that kind of nerd. I got a but case like, of Son of Aurelius uh, foam yeah. swords that you guys should yeah. fucking use. Oh, nice. Exactly. No way. Anyways, yeah, yeah. dude. My, oh, uh, last time I was down in Santa Cruz, uh, I was like, dude, you got fucking son of Aurelius foam swords. And he's like, yeah, dude, we used to uh, throw them out into the pit. So dudes would fucking have sword fights while they're pitting. Oh, that's great. Shit. Hey, well, I, I got, got a nice surprise for all you Exum fans out there. Yes. Tell us. So the backstory is if you guys listen to, have you ever watched um, Ash versus evil dead or Ash oh, versus yeah, yeah. evil? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So totally, when they, yeah. when they reintroduced that on Netflix, I think it was, um, they came out with this like um, little swag bag that came and had like a, foam chainsaw well i got one of those chainsaws <laughs> oh uh, fuck yeah out. hell yeah yes but this says oh, it's zoomed. Oh, it's zoomed. Limb. limb from limb so we're gonna sell these bad boys at the shows oh so, yeah and oh, i've fuck. been lobbying like trying to get these things made for like two years with matt i'm like you know what fuck it i'm just gonna find out who makes these things so i got i bought one online because i didn't own the, the chainsaw but it's got the ash versus evil dead on it and I got inside was the contact to the company there in Canada, in Nova Scotia. So I called them. They still had the templates for nice. cutting, the, cutting the foam. So we're going to have those at the show now. So my totally hope good. is, you, 
you know, I don't know if you guys listen to Cranium, that slam band where we played a show with them. Yeah. And they throw fucking um, inflatable hammers in the crowd. <laughs> so when they're doing their breakdown riffs, the fans, you know, they pit with the fucking hammers. I'm like, well, that's what we're going to do with the phone. Just bopping dudes on their, their freshly Lynn, shaved heads. Just, oh, so, yeah. yeah. That's cool, man. Fun. I mean, especially you being involved in merch your whole life. Like, I'm sure, like, you want to find that next dude. fucking cool, fun yeah. thing that, like, people, it's, like it's not t shirts and. Fucking, well, those little like, flares, you know. dude, like Black Dahlia Murder throwing beach balls into the crowd. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Just like all that little, make like, fun. Extra yeah. little fucking shit that yeah, happens at the shows is exactly. what makes you remember. Yeah, that like night, Municipal you know? Waste, they would do the confetti cannons. Or, you know, even Tony would get on a, like a boogie board and jump out of the crowd. And the crowd would float. You know? <laughs> oh, just yeah. fun shit. Like, that's what the whole thing about, you know, our character and our, our mascot just to make it interactive because totally you know i mean as much as we've all loved to to watch just four guys stand in one spot and headbang like you got to make the show more interactive mm-hmm. for the fans mm-hmm. make it interesting for them and give them something to talk about yeah. and just make it fun that's all it's also yeah, like totally. you know you look back at like the godfathers of it like you go see like war like one of the oh, old yeah. war shows and shit for like you're sure. like especially i remember being like on tour and like we might have even played a fest with them or something yeah. and like we're like sitting there just going like, I, like, I like move like I go like this every now and then go to the side and go like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is like all I do. I like walk up, maybe turn yeah. around the drum set. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I might do something crazy like that. I don't know. And they're just like fucking yeah, jump on the riser. Like, yeah, yeah okay, see real quick just, and turn back. Like a fucking humongous guy come out and just like eat like a fucking celebrity and like spray blood yeah. everywhere. And you're like, I can't never compete with that. That's insane. Yeah. Like, like I'm sitting there with a smile on my face the whole time laughing. And like it just engages everyone when you have something <laughs> different. I remember Swashbuckle. We played with this like kind of funny. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah, we did a little tour with them, and they were oh, like, like pirate shit, yeah. pirate shit, and they were just like a pirate grind kind of band. And yeah. what they pirate grind? Okay, right? That sounds like that's right up my alley, dude. Oh, totally. Swashbuckle no, no, is awesome. what they're called. Okay. Yeah, they were on Nuclear Blast when we were toured with Vader, and uh, they were fucking hilarious, man. Yeah. Like they would have like someone dress up as a parrot and someone else as a fucking <laughs> a palm tree or something like yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> And, they, and a shark and they would make them it like sounds like a future guest dude well, they, well what they oh i'll get pat on but they like literally like have to like like if you put those they find people in the crowd and like if you put those if you put those costumes on what that means is you're going to run into each other on stage and you're going to stage dive like yeah. you're not there's no other there's no other, like that's all it's what you're going to do like you have to it's like gore with their slaves you know they get a bunch totally. of people to do, to volunteer and get up and get murdered on stage and shit but <laughs> exactly which is crazy we've been to their they have a, a like a compound in Richmond, Virginia, where they make all their props, and it was fucking awesome to go in there. They have like an actual team of people that yeah. sit in this warehouse and make all their props and create new stuff. And they also do stuff for other like horror film conventions stuff like that. But they have all their old stuff on the, the walls, like on the, the shelves, the stuff from you know previous characters that they've done and that they retired and all their road cases. It's so awesome. I wonder what the like- percentage of like the money they actually make goes into that. You know, well, the thing is, like with Guar, too, I mean, on top of the stuff they have to put in, they have cleanup bills. Like, I remember, yeah. uh, like, uh, I was talking to someone at the Catalyst and uh, they played there, it was sold out. You know, they sold it out with like fucking 30 bucks a piece. You know, like, they did pretty good, like, with that. But then it was a $2,500 cleanup fee, right? Like, all their fucking props and shit, like, that they're paying for, yeah. all their people that they're paying to be on tour with. So it's like they're really doing it. Like on the skin of their teeth for the love of the fucking music. They're not. Sure. Doesn't that sound like money. fuck you? I mean, they don't. They probably don't have fuck you money, but it's just like they come in, they do their thing, and they're just like, "All right, dude, we're out." No, they they just they give it their all. They don't care about like they just want to pay their bills. They're not trying to make a bunch of money, and and yeah. if it costs a lot of money, they do it. You know, they like so. they literally make fifty five gallon drums of fake blood, and it's all piped into all their props, and it's just crazy how much blood they go through like in a night. It's and that really reputation awesome. gets them to be known by people that aren't even in the like, you know, that scene or right. in the know. Yeah, like, everybody know knows one that of their word war. I don't yeah, know one of their songs. The they'll, they'll show up with a white T-shirt and be in front, but they don't know one of their songs. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're like, they're <laughs> event. you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, dude, that's funny, dude. Like the dude who shows up at a Guar show doesn't realize what's gonna happen, and he's like dressed nicely, kind of like how I showed up for TVV, <laughs> dude. I showed yeah. up in a collared shirt, slacks, and fucking dress <laughs> shoes, bro. Yeah. All the my wife looking fine on the it. side, bro. It literally was thumb out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> You were Vegas. Hey, man, I was you Vegas. Dude, you still literally can, I mean, yeah. dude, I like to get dapper, but at the same time, I like fucking Discords, dude. So what's up? <laughs> 
dude oh man it just brought me back to the 2012 uh vegas death fest when it was disgorge day one severed savior day two the day oh, that you flew yeah, back dude. from your wedding to headline yeah. las vegas death fest and that now was a great experience dude nine years later i get to headline sin city slaughter fest as you're like, on a fucking show with me for the last year it's like it's all really cool fucking intertwining shit that's going on dude things yeah. are getting folded into each other again guys yeah. yeah this is all churning again we're 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 over a decade later it's gonna be different and it's still fucking being molded dude well the scene is healthy and it has like a new generation of fans that are like coming in who are like they like the nostalgia of the stuff they didn't get to see and they're right. like want to experience it for themselves and so it's great to be able to be a part of that and like sharing the music and and, and now i'm like down, in the yeah. position that the severed savior guys and the deeds of flesh guys are at, at we're, now we're yeah. taking on you guys and loving it just as much as these guys loved it when they see the young blood coming up you know so so yeah. that's also the importance of getting out to watch a show before the you know the length of a, you know, of a band's career could be shorter than anticipated. And, you know, it's like get out there to see them before the band is no longer touring. It could be the last, any show could be any band's last show. It's true. It really could. Yeah. Yeah. Any fight or something like that. It could just end it. Well, so deeds of flesh is one of my number one bucket list bands. I have to see now. So I hope you guys play another show after these two shows you've got that I can make it to. Yeah, I mean, we amazing. that's the idea is to, you yeah. know, not obviously we can't tour, but to do festivals would, you know, totally doable. Yeah. And, you know, if it makes sense for us, you know, the timing of everything works out. And, you know, we also we talked about doing, you know, a cool like tribute show where we can invite, you know, you know, former members to come up and, you know, play a song or just something like who knows? There's a lot of things we've yeah. been talking and discussing. Like, so, you know, the future looks good for us, but it's also, you know, it's not going to be as busy as, you know, we would have hoped and the fans would hope, but we're, we're going to do our best to, you know, st- still get out there and play shows and, and definitely be part of the scene and stuff. For I mean, sure. that's awesome well, for, I mean, that's a, that's a real good, um, like incentive for festival people to be like, okay, well, yeah. they're going to do their one show this year. Sure. So you fucking are flying out here is what you're doing next. Yeah. And you're going to see what, like, because they're doing their one show and you're going to have their old whatever member show up and do this for song sure. and stuff like well, that. Well, we definitely like, would like to do something in Vegas for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You if that happens, then I'm fucking there, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I we mean, do I'd a love show? a Cali date too, but I'm, I was yeah. just thinking about that while you guys are talking. Like, how far will I fly for deeds? I think I'll fly pretty fucking far, dude. If it, if it really I'm is. I'm thinking France right now. Like, <laughs> like, 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 I, got my, I, just, I just got my right fucking on. brand new renewed passport the other day. There you go. Ready. What up? Good. There you yeah, go. Yeah. Why Ready can't there be a Cali death like show fest? <laughs> oh, no, no. We've been talking uh, about it. But yeah. like, what, if, what if there was like a show that we could do with, you know, and like odious, maybe we could play oh, and TV yeah. and deeds. I'd love and, to yeah. do some odious shit live again, guys. I really yeah. would. Totally. I mean, we're I, talking I, about I it. I just so. was talking about this. I would yeah. love to do this. Oh yeah. I feel like it's possible. I think it's definitely yeah. not. Deeds I mean, back, Mike's back in the mix, dude. I don't, like, we Mike's, could, we we're do, starting yeah. to run we out of excuses, deeds, guys. If we could do deeds severed. Yeah. Carpet, yeah. Oh shit. Uh, TVV. That'd be pretty sick. Right. Mike there. Gilbert, Troy Fullerton. Fucking yeah! Pull up get them some, fucking some severed socks. Get some boots. What, tie them boots. Fucking yeah. get it going, dude. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of severed, man, fucking, uh, <laughs> I was trying to find the fucking yeah. what is it? Pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you know, whatever the fuck. Bootstraps, it is. yeah. Your sock straps, yeah, totally. Yeah. Mur- Mur- Murray's, <laughs> Murray's been outfitting the whole scene, man. I yeah. know. Fuck. Murray's I'm just so been bummed. Sitting oh, outfitting, just, yeah. He's just like fucking yeah. throwing out jerseys left and right. I lost. Awesome I lost see, all man. my jerseys. I lost all my jerseys because someone stole them from Psycho Fest. Someone. I was in the. Oh, um, I was. I, I've talked about it real quick. I'll just real quick. And I was going through TSA. Boom! Some lady held me up there. It was like for the fucking the walk through the fucking metal detector. Yeah. Some dude grabbed my bag instead of his bag, took it, and just fucking like like a couple a week later was like, I have your bag, and I'm like sick. I'm all. I'll pay you money. Just send it back to me. I have all those jerseys in it. I have like oh, stuff like very stuff. It. And he sent it, and it's. I have a tracking number. It's like, oh, it's still on the way, and it's been two and a half months. Oh damn! So, Dude, I think it's fucking. Lost. I uh, I was at so coming back from Vegas, we're looking out the window and shit, and and uh, fucking lo- a piece of luggage fell out of the side of one of those <laughs> trams. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. It just fell out and the tram just kept going, dude. And so <laughs> Bryce and I were waiting to fucking uh, leave and we're like bored and shit. And we're just like, wonder how long it takes for them to grab that shit. No, they didn't give fucking a shit. Grabbed it, dude. There was trams that went by it and dude was just like later. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, nobody stopped and get it, dude. So that is, I, I was literally, I, I turned to her and I was like, we just got the inside of why bags are lost. Dude, well, dude, it felt like the, shit, the TSA, dude. the TSA when they lost it or whatever, they were part of it, you know. But then I was um, like being positive. I'm like, okay, dude, they probably have a timeline, <laughs> you know. Well, no, like, like watching them like actually deal with a stole like a bag that's stolen. They're like, they're watching the dude. I'm watching them watch it on the fucking on the uh, security cameras. But mm-hmm. it feels like they're just like placating me to be like, yeah, we're looking for it. Like they're, but they're like, and they gave me this like card that was like a lost and found card that was like made by like a four year old like on crayon. <laughs> it was like it was like a total like shitty card. They're like, yeah, call this number if you want to like maybe. And then the like, cops all like, let me get you a case number. And I love like I was like, dude, you're not even like the guy is like close by. Like you saw him in the video. I yeah. gave you the timestamp. Just look at it. And they're like, oh, I don't can't find him. I'm like. Oh man, it was just like it was a nightmare dealing with a stolen bag. It was just like, just take it, kind it's of. Bummer, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna it's hit up Marie and be like, let so me. What you got? Money. Like a random, you got a random check, like a random. Uh, oh, she was screaming frisk. at me. I told you about the on one of these other uh, episodes where like my pants were like they were up, but she was like, she's like, pull your pants up, and I'm like, is my butt out? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I was like, oh, me and Pat Kenny, we were all hung over, and I was all, dude, like. Like they're up and she's a higher and she made me pull my pants or, or my shorts around my belly button to go through a fucking like the the fucking scan the the x-ray scanner and like yeah. she was like yelling at me and i was like what the f-? like they kept making me go back and then my bag's gone do you understand why though i i just understood why because when you sag your pants you're leaving all that space between your junk and the pants so you could actually hide some shit in that Dude, there's no area. space i'm just kidding what are you hiding oh. dude? <laughs> what are you fucking hiding bro? yo the front of my pants, my pants is tight, son. I'm smuggling hams over here. What the fuck? <laughs> He's always still got nothing on that one. Left. You have to have something there. Can we get? Can we do so that like, I got a question, Mike. So like, of all the times we had to like go through different borders and stuff, and like oh. Canada and back and forth and all that oh. stuff. Like, what were like some of the most like crazy stories you guys had dealing with that? Well, the the first most brutal one ever was the. I don't know if I touched on this but it's the first bloodletting it was deeds cephalic carnage mortal decay and disgorge and it was our first tour and we're all, all everybody had bands we were going through the border in canada and they asked we this is like right at the beginning of the tour we got the full unique leader catalog like the full distro and the trailer everybody's got tons of boxes of shirts we, we're like merged up we're fitted mm-hmm. out we're like mm-hmm. we're, we have enough merch for the entire tour and we only play like two or three shows to get over to the Canadian border. So we pretty much have everything. We go through, they ask us if we have any commercial goods. We're like, commercial goods? No, we don't have commercial goods. So they pull us over. They pull all four vans over. They make us bring all of our merch out. They, they open up our trailers and like, what's all this? Like, well, this is our T-shirts and stuff. Like, well, this is commercial goods. We're like, oh, shit, we're fucked. We're like, well, we need you to grab all that, and bring it into customs. So we did that. Everybody grabbed all their merch, going to customs. Like, we need you to count all your merch for us. Well, here's the first thing they did was they processed everybody. Anybody that had any kind of like record, like say if you had a DUI or if you had like a battery where you got, or just any kind of anything that's on your record, they run that. And if it pops up, they charge you a fee to get into Canada. So they processed like six of us first. So they got at the time it was like 139 bucks to go as a they call it a temporary resident permit that allows you to go into Canada, play your shows as a tourist, but you have to have an exit date. So so they processed all of us. They charged us like 139 bucks. So then we gave them our money for that. So then they said, okay, we need you to count all of your merch. If you're off by one piece, we're gonna take all your vehicles, all your equipment, all your merch, and you guys can take your handbags and go back to the states. We're like, oh mm. fuck! So we basically broke down into teams. It's like Mortal Decay, Deeds, and everybody. We count all of our merch. We count it twice just so we're not off because we're afraid. We're so afraid they're gonna take all of our shit. And mind you, like some of the guys like borrowed trailers, and some of the guys are still like leasing their vans. 
So we took it very serious. So we count everything, we give them the numbers. So as they're searching through, they see like a relapse order form for shirts. And they see the pricing of all the shirts, which we weren't selling at the same price, but so they base it on that. So they're like, okay, so what they basically did was they made us count all of our merch so that we can give them an accurate number so they can give us a correct tax number to charge yeah. us. So yeah. they basically charged us like three grand in taxes for all the merch just to bring it into Canada. Before it's even sold. Before it's even sold. We're like, we're not going to sell all this in Canada. Like this is for the entire tour. But you have like, to count it back in, right? And they supposedly give you a well, no, refund. No, they, they didn't do that. Only Switzerland does that. Switzerland uh, does that, but Canada didn't do that at the time. I don't know if they do it now, but... I think they do it now, but yeah. yeah I thought so it was they, for our blood and lighting. That's how it was. They counted No, we, we said we said promotional stuff because because of what Michael went well, through. Well, no, I'm Mike, not saying Michael. odious personally. Why, why are you outing us, dude? Oh, yeah, I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> no, for <laughs> I thought for other bands... <laughs> but yeah, but, uh, so... You but get the, taxed. The you that. get you get a number tallied, and then when you come back through the border, they tax you on what you. Yeah, but well, Mike's saying that, that it wasn't now. like that back in the day. But back then, saying. they didn't do that. So what they did was like, so they already got the 139 bucks times six out of us. We're like, granted, it's like we're in the very beginning of our tour, so we don't have a lot of capital to like pay these taxes. So we ended up having to had to use our credit cards and shit, and max our credit cards out, and all that stuff. They charge us tax on all of it. So. And meanwhile, we have a show to get to. Like we have a show that's like a two hour drive from the border that we have to, that we're like missing. We're going to be late. So we're counting everything. We give them the numbers. They tax us. As soon as we pay them, they're like, okay, you're free to go. And so we had to pack all of our shit back up, throw the trailers, haul ass to the first show, which was at Fufoons, which is in Montreal. Yep. So we get there and I think internal bleeding was, was already there playing. We're going to meet them there and like kind of like a, a co-op show kind of deal. And we got there and, Luckily, we set up merch. We sold like a thousand bucks of merch the first night. Had a killer show. It was awesome. But yeah, that was the first like, here's your introduction into touring. And this yeah, is like the maybe. reality. International like, touring. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. so that was pretty shit. brutal experience for us to like learn at a young age touring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other one was with Exhumed. We were in Russia. <laughs> oh, shit. Cool. So we played two shows. We played St. Petersburg. We played Moscow. So as we're play the shows, trying to leave, the promoter drops us off at the airport. Or actually, the promoter comes with us into the airport to check our bags in so we can pay for the baggage fees. So if you've toured international, you know that they always try to charge you for guitars as an oversized item. They measure yep. it all out. And it's like, oh, mm -hmm. sorry, you exceeded your, you know, your, your um, what's the word? You've exceeded your, you know, your maximum amount for baggage. You have to pay allowance, an additional yeah. allowance. Correct. Yeah. So we're like, okay, fuck, here we go. So we take 45 minutes just to check our bags in in St. Petersburg. We're like, we got to get on a flight. We got to go. So finally, we do that. We get our receipts. We say thanks to the promoter. We go haul ass. We have to go through a passport check. And we have to go through a security check. Then we're as we're running to our gate, the gates close. Boom. We're like, let us in. That's our flight. They're like, sorry, plane's closed. We we're one minute late. To our flight like literally one minute late and they shut the gate and they're like sorry you can't board like well we need new tickets like well you have to go to the information desk talk to them about it so very cold very just like you know yeah just crazy russia so <laughs> like, yeah so we go to that we go to the information desk we're like okay we just missed our flight we need you to book us another flight well in the u.s if you miss your flight they just book you another flight right no big deal you might have to pay a small fee of like they're like sorry we don't have another flight for like another two or three hours. Like, okay, I guess that's the one we'll have to take. She goes, you all have to pay for new tickets. We're like, what? Like, yeah, you have to pay for new tickets. Like, no, we don't because your people at baggage held us up for 45 minutes. That's your responsibility. We are not paying for new tickets. And then they just, they stall you out. They just sit there and you straight face you like, sorry, not my problem. And I'm like, what the fuck that's what the fuck like we need new tickets like yeah, okay, i feel well, like customer service in russia might not be the same no as it's not no they're very cold and clinical it's like it's yeah it's it's an extortion game is what it is totally it's like exactly waited out what, it's waited out it's, yeah it's it sounds just, like organized so they, crime dude yeah they just sit there and they wait for you to like you know just basically Break. crumble and just pay them the money well the yeah. tickets were 750 bucks each because we're going back to the u.s times six we're like, fuck, they're about times five. So we're like, we don't have that money. Well, we did, but I'm like, we're not giving you that money because it's not our fault. 
So we had to call the promoter. Promoter comes back to the airport. Is sitting there arguing with baggage on the other side. Meanwhile, keep in mind, they already stamped our fucking passport. So oh. we're stuck in the airport. We can't go can't back. Leave. We can't leave and we can't go on a flight uh. because they won't sell us another ticket and they won't issue us a new ticket. So Jesus. it's like that Netflix special where that guy where he lived at the airport for a year. Literally, because they you're stamped like in your purgatory, passport, dude. you're stuck. And so they're just like, so we went from like being super pissed off to being like, oh, come on, please just let us go to being like, fuck, I guess we live here now. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. They're like, well, start breaking out your guitars. Let's, you know, oh, we don't have our guitars because they're in fucking baggage. Where are our guitars? We don't know where our shit's at. We're like, oh my God, this is such uh. a fuck fest. So the promoter comes back, talks with them. I mean, we're back and forth via text. Meanwhile, we're, we've been in the airport two hours and we've gone from like full anxiety attack to like, fuck it, we give up. Yeah. And, yeah. and so we're just sitting there like, we don't know what to do anymore. So the promoter's sitting there talking with them. And finally, they issue us after talking with them. Like I've told them multiple times, it was not our fault. It was your fault. It was the people at baggage. And they're just like, then they went through a whole shift change. So then you have to like explain to the whole new guy, oh my God, here we go again with the whole new, like here it is. So finally, I can think it's two or three hours later, they finally issue us new tickets because they had to go back. They had to review the cameras and make sure it was their fault before they would issue us new tickets. Finally issue us new tickets. We get on the plane. We're just like, fuck this. (laughs) Damn. So you finally found the the right guy. Those are the things that happen on the road that you don't expect that you have to be prepared for. You have to figure Mm -hmm. out how in the fuck am I going to get out of this? Because we could have, to this day, still living in fucking Russia. <laughs> just, I mean, that no one, like the Russian people are awesome. Like the concerts yeah. were killer. Promoter was awesome. But yeah, that experience was just like very humbling because it's like straight face, cold. Sorry, not my problem. You need to buy new tickets or like we don't fucking have the money. Yeah, you can't like raise your voice too loud in Russia. Oh, no, as soon as you do that, they're just like, oh, they'll yeah, call security like, oh, on you. Cop, and then just yeah, wrap yeah. your ass up. You're done. Mm, totally. Yeah. So you can't like, like throw okay. a, a, a a like a fucking like a I'm in California fucking Southwest yeah. like fit like you're like <laughs> no you can't be I'm a fucking American like, yeah, yeah you can't do <laughs> much nah, you know, that, that don't like, work dude. dude it's like you're also a prisoner now so that's yeah, tight. yeah you're actually yeah you now you're yeah your number is this and you're working at this camp from here yeah on exactly out. it's like you're making license plates for the Russian but yeah that was that was a pretty scary moment we're like wow how do we get the hell out of this one this is crazy it's like damn well we had the money but we're like if we fucking spend money on new tickets basically all our profits from these two shows gone gone. Yeah, it's all yeah. gone. So we basically so, did this for nothing. Did everybody get their gear back from that situation? Well, we did. They just held. They never put it on the plane. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So luckily, I mean, yeah. Luckily, so our, our that would have been a mother. Flight, fuck, that would have been a fuck, yeah clusterfuck. It would have been. Well, it's like what LAX. Mike was saying. It was like a, it was. A, it's a fucking extortion gig. It's like a. It's it like, is. all right, well, we're going to, we, we could let them on if we want to, or you, know you were just over there hundred dollars a person and get fucking yeah. all this money they off. You were just over there making, you know, doing a gig, making a we little did, money. We did, we did two gigs. We did St. Petersburg and Moscow. They and shook gigs. you down before you yeah, left. Yeah, they did. Right? And well, we totally. weren't the only people that were in that experience. There was like 10 people around us. The same exact thing happened to us. So that's when I knew it was like, this is a fucking scheme. Extortion. Yeah, yeah totally. It's extortion. And they're just trying to get money out of us. And they just sit there and they, they do the stall. They stall you out until you break and say fuck it swipe my credit card you know what yeah I mean? mm-hmm. so, wow. so how early Dude. should you get to the airport for an international flight three, three hours you should always do two hours <laughs> two hours yeah yeah, yeah. you may suck it's just minimum. sitting there doing nothing but man just get there early just like, do three after that yeah. story do three fuck because i mean oh, no i mean yeah I mean, after what you guys went through, fuck. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. fucking three hours. Just being that prepared, have I a mean, book. from the time that we checked in our luggage, it's almost like it's a. It, they do it on purpose. They stall you out. Exactly. From the time you check it's your luggage fucking in, they know how money. much time you have to get to your gate. They know you have to go through passport yep. check. They know you have to go through security check. Yep, totally. You know? Yeah, so. And they know you're fucking like in a fucking weird pond and you have no idea where the fuck you are and you have no place. You have no. Yeah. person to call to help you besides a promoter like right it's, no, it's, that, that guy was already he already had left and so we're just like we have nobody on our team to help us get out of the situation god like, i felt like my story was bad with just waiting 17 hours and a uh, because it got canceled that's all that's like my story yeah like, that's, that's like as bad as we had it and that was like Wait, yeah, what's that was terrible no, like, the, wor- the worst no. was when we realized that they already stamped our passports to leave yeah. the country so we can't go back in 
Yeah, they yeah. stamped you into purgatory, like I said earlier, permits. dude. We have to have documentation to get to go to leave the airport to go back into town. It's like they can't cross it out. Like, yeah, no, that's yeah, it. international that's waters. Yeah, they Damn. they stamp it and you're done. Like you're holy fuck! I didn't even think about that. Jesus Christ! Okay, well yeah. that's a, that's probably number one yeah. worst that I've, I've heard on here on this whole podcast. I mean, I don't think we're. I think that's happened to more than one. I don't think it's. We're the only ones that's that happened. To I remember Spawn was telling us a, a tour they were on where, like, they basically like their bus broke down and they were just like, I don't know, we'll just walk somewhere. Like, it yeah. was like in the middle of like the mountains and they're just like, Yeah, I guess you guys go this way, you guys go this way, and we'll like try to find someone yeah. to get us. You guys back almost froze though. You're yeah. in the back of a fucking truck one time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we almost froze, but I mean, I had like my cold, I had like really cold feet but, for yeah. for nine they're like they're like at the top of the mountains it's, i guess we are just spawn of the goat people we live here now. <laughs> it's like let's just start a new life dude let's be mountain yeah, like, and, like, spawn of the we'll ghosts the cabin. stand on the sides of cliffs dude. yeah that's, that's just exactly. crazy dude exactly it's crazy but yeah. those are the things that you don't you don't you know you think everything's good and it, it the whole experience was awesome and then that, totally. that right there was just like damn just totally like we did like a 10 hour, like an old school train ride from Moscow to St. Petersburg. It was yeah. awesome. It was like, yeah, that's awesome. It was cool. The, the whole yeah. countryside, it was, but it was cool. But yeah. And when it gets offered to you, you, you don't really think too much about like what could go wrong too much, but like, yeah. you could think about like, you know, it's a, it's definitely a different territory and things can, can go sure. astray, but not like, not in like where I'm like, when, you're in an airport possibly. Sure. Like it's like. You like, know, you, know I mean? you can trust your promoters, you, know, you can trust people at the venue, but outside of that circle, it's like, you know, you got to kind of be careful when you're traveling to, you know, different countries because you don't understand the, you know, the customs and especially if you don't speak the language, you know, you don't, you know, you, you can just get yeah. yourself in some situations that you're like, okay, how do I get out of this? It's kind of crazy. And you know? yelling won't help you at all. <laughs> like, no, because yeah, like, yeah. yeah. make it worse. Probably. Yeah, it just makes it worse. And arrogance is never the key. Always be humble and be, you know, yeah. be nice because as soon as you start putting your chest out, it's like, okay, here we go. You know? Yeah. So Jesus. Yeah. Those are my yeah. two fun stories that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that I got to live those through two, like two. Yeah. Just like two bouts of extortion, basically. <laughs> I mean, there's been a time actually remember when we actually deeds of flesh, we were um, playing, I forget the fucking venue in Montreal, but, uh, uh, it was club something club petite or something. Club petite. I want to say yeah. it's called, okay. but, um, we were um i forgot i was one of the was one of the locals that was like a humongous death metal fan like outside drinking paps blue ribbon in the fucking streets because he's like yeah fucking drink blah blah and like we get we get accosted by like probably three or four cops and it's me and these like three guys and they're just like we're just having fun we're all drunk we're having a good time like we're not harming anyone we're just laughing talking about music and stuff and these three cops roll up on us and they're just they want to take me to jail immediately they're like Oh, you're drinking in the streets? Okay, well, you're going to jail. And like the fucking dude I was with is we know you know who he is. I forget his fucking name, but he's this humongous, like giant dude. Like he's probably like six foot seven, massive dude with like he's really got like, a really deep low voice, but he was like, I've I've seen him at like multiple shows on tour, but um mm-hmm. the cops want to take me to jail and not them. Like they want to take me. And uh fucking he's like, What the fuck? Are you fucking kidding me? He starts just cussing the cop out. Yeah. I'm just like, dude, like I'm about to go to jail. Like, stop. And so I had to just, he's all, I'll give you a hundred bucks. This is what the guy said. I'll give you a hundred bucks to, and they're like, okay, to like, let me go. Just like yeah. buying him off. And the, and the, and he was so loud and crazy. He's all, you're about to fucking take a bribe, motherfucker. And I just started just screaming at him and they just <laughs> ran away. <laughs> <laughs> and left you with them. They got Jeez. all freaked out, but they got freaked out about like the bribe uh, thing. Cause like, yeah, I'm taking a bribe in town. public. Is, yeah. Oh, so yeah. then they, out, he outed the cop knew, and ran. Like, yeah. he knew like what he like stood up for me and was just like, you gonna like take a bribe, motherfucker? And they just fucking no, no, no. And they just like turned around and walked away. Can somebody please remind me of what the name of the place or where we played in Ottawa? I I can think of Toronto. I can think of Montreal, and I Ottawa? can think of Vancouver. We played Ottawa. We played, Ottawa. We played four shows that that bloodletting. Go for it. Yeah, I don't remember. Professor, to be honest, the uh, that's that's uh, the last the one that I can't yeah, remember. Pull up there. the flyer. If it'll be on but the flyer. But it, just in my mind, it's gone. But Montreal, uh, Vancouver. I remember Vancouver because it was like a cool little district Toronto. down by the water. I remember. Yeah, it was. It was, like it was actually kind of like near like a Chinatown area. Yeah, totally. And it, that was the Lamp Lighter, I think it was called. Okay, that sounds familiar. That was actually a high stage too. That 
Yeah, it Bill, was like a chest. Yeah, chest like a chest. And high Bill almost hurt himself pretty hard jumping in the crowd. That was like a precursor to yeah. later on when he would finally break his leg. Yeah. Does into, anybody uh, know how Bill's doing? Is he doing good? Yeah, I, I, mean, good. I, I mean, I think that everybody's doing great, dude. Everybody's just chilling, you okay. know. Bill, uh, Bill has been on the podcast. I mean, it, actually, that's been like almost a year now, too. Yeah, Fuck, dude. Well, he's I, surfing now. I mean, his legs better is what I was getting at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I think he's he's done a a good yeah. recovery for what it was, dude. I mean, yeah. he broke his leg in a, a spot. Crazy. You don't want to break it, dude. Yeah, that's you nice, don't want to break it in that spot, dude. For a drummer, that's a career ender for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think it was called Mavericks that you guys played at in Ottawa. Oh, okay. Oh, sick, dude. Thanks, yeah. Joseph. Cool. That July, was like, oh, that was it was downstairs. July 31st, 2006. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. Wow. Yeah. Wow, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he is yeah. A, he, in middle of the How old were you, Joseph? <laughs> I was 16. I was okay. in 16, dude. I was I just starting that. to go to metal shows. Okay. I did not cool. see you guys on that tour, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I was Perfectly right in the 21 area, so I could buy drinks, dude. Yeah, yeah I was like 23, I guess. Yeah, so maybe I was almost 22 then because I'm only, I, I don't think I'm yeah. two years younger than you, Casey. I think I'm one and change. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, dude, uh, that's so funny and cool to think that Joseph was 16 at that time. Yeah, and then he would get to an mm-hmm. age where this this style of music well, still resonated with him totally. you know joseph was 16 then and the first time i saw mike play i was 17 in 2000 wild shit dude that's just cool, the man. that's just when everyone gets into death metal like, generations dude yeah, 16, I think so. 16 yeah. Star Trek, dude, right here oh yeah 16, yeah, 17 is when Mike you start is like going to shows Captain for Picard sure. and stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you got somebody that can get you to the venue, dude, 16, 17 is when you want to really start going to shows for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Or it's usually like a family member, like an older cousin or something like that. It's like, dude, here's this tape or here's this CD or here's this band you got to check out. Like that's how you know I got and into that, it. Yeah. Going well, through this, this last year and change with this podcast, that is a very common thing. You yeah. Know, the older yeah. generation passing For it sure. down. Well, it's like Kelly Death Podcast Generations. Yeah. So you got Mike and then my generation and then Joseph's. They're all like different ones. Yeah. Like the next generation, like a Star Trek. And then I'm in a band with no, uh, with a dude. Right the back. dudes in my other band are 25, 24, and 22. So, mm-hmm. so he's already oh, doing his fucking pulling up the Jesus. next generation. Yeah. And he, and yeah. what's cool about Joseph is that he's got uh even though he's younger than us, he's got a one at least one tentacle that goes long enough into the past to where he could play and understand and love TVV Disgorge and well really be into this. Yeah, we still play Wombful of Scabs, which is written in '92, yeah, or maybe yeah. even earlier. <laughs> I yeah. was born in ninety, so <laughs> speaking of generations, <laughs> they're as old as me. Two when it came out, and now this yeah. motherfucker I'd like to. It, I was in a womb full of scabs or whatever, <laughs> as when they were writing it. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make a shout out to uh, this this dude's band, uh, Putrid Tomb from San Diego. Oh yeah, and uh, this is dude Kian, who is the drummer and singer also in that, and uh, he. Like I, I used to teach at this uh, school that like he was like, you know, like a teenager, like playing drums in these punk bands and stuff. And then, uh, yeah, then like after that, he like graduated and like he started this band and stuff. And so they're like a local sick death metal band. Um, and yeah, they're up and coming. So Putrid Tomb, Putrid check it out. Tomb. Nice. In San Diego. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking also, of Puser Tomb, you guys ever hear about the the coffin that got dug up or, or the esophagus or whatever the fuck it the they call it in Egypt? Sarcophagus. Uh, sarcophagus. sarcophagus. <laughs> <laughs> and they, 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 got, they, they, they right? popped the top and people are like, I want to yeah. drink that liquid. Do you get no, do you remember that what? part? Dude, there was people that wanted to pay to drink the liquid of the corpses in a fucking sarcophagus that was recently into uh, taken out, fucking like within the last like three years. Four you mean years. exhumed? 
I should have. Right, if I didn't have enough, if I didn't have this circle. much beer, I probably would have got that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but for real, though, it, like people were like paying to like I want to sip. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. That's crazy. So, Mike, we got it. So, we're part of a, a exclusive non Murray club because the Murray club is the most gangster club there is. But the murder dog, he's just recruiting people, dude, for the hall for the you know the end of the world, man. He's like, he's got to get his soldiers in line. <laughs> well, totally I know, right? Dude. I know. He is. It's protected. You get a fucking yeah. like tournament going, dude. Like, yeah. let's oh, dude, I'll teams. show you guys a basketball. Oh, but, uh, dude, you don't so, even know, dude, dude. I'll fucking do his fadeaways, dude. King of Life, all day. I'll but, do uh, fadeaways. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no. So we are part of the the Liberty Crew now. You have your oh, picture coming. Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. dude. I yeah. thought this was so dope. Shout out to Liberty Pitch Liberty. Chart Six Six Six. I actually yeah. go follow her on that. Instagram Pitch Chart Six Six Six. She, she, she yeah. did a. She's a great artist, man. Great. She's she great. Does, She would send me like like when she was like working on it. She'd send me like like when she was like at the beach. She'd be working on this, and like she said, the hardest part was the frets. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I don't know if you can see mine. Ah, the glare. It's too. Yeah, it's kind of. Oh, no, hold, hold anyway, so like, yeah, but, but what's stuff, crazy is that she yeah, was doing she that that sketch, and That's we nice. use that same picture yeah. for cool. our flyer for this. No, she, episode. She's been twice. It's been twice. There was another episode we did, and it was it was Terrence. The same picture we used for the Terrence flyer. She was already yeah. drawing. She already had a drink. Like drawn too. She's like, what the fuck? Like I'm a. She she texts me today. She's like, I'm like the, the sorcerer. She's starting to want royalties for our flyers, dude. Yeah, no, she's like, like the know. most metalhead chick of the whole Northern California. Oh yeah, totally. dude. We had a great time at that ontogeny show. Yeah, she, she was came there out and hung out. Fucking yeah. chill. And she was Super a fucking shark. chill, dude. Yeah, she is. Well, we had we played like it was like a skate park, and we played actually like on the on the top of like a, a skate ramp. And yeah. she was in front of the crowd, just like headbanging the entire show. Mm -hmm. Oh no, she's crazy. Fact about that show is some guy. Down. Some guys. This is the first for me. This is crazy. Um, here it is. Oh yeah, here it is. is. Yeah, that's killer. Yeah, that's awesome. fuck yeah, dude. So sick. It, it looked like I just got done with a five round MMA fight. <laughs> 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 no, but she's great. Great artist. Um, a dude actually died at our show. Exum played, and it was us and Netcrot. And the guy slipped and hit his head on the ground, and that was it. it Dude, was isn't it? Yeah. It was How us, Necrot, and like Gatekeeper. That? What about uh, the first time anything ever like that happened? At a no. Show. What about Deeds of Flesh? Didn't someone die in Deeds of Flesh show at the Pound back in the day? I remember hearing about it. I don't no, know. That, no, no, that pound, was a dude. no, that was a fight. Um, somebody okay. brandished yeah. a gun, and it was like it was a big. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. okay. It was a whole. We yeah. actually talked about going back to those old episodes. We already talked about that, but yeah, that was one of the deeds of flesh. Just has has had a very bad, a very uh, violent juju at, the, at pound. the pound. It's not necessarily <laughs> like the guys in the band. It's more like our no. fans. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know They're what just it very brings. Passionate about death, but metal I mean, I've toured with know, deeds, and it doesn't bring crazy people the whole time. Yeah, yeah. But, touring with Deeds, it was never like that. But it's like San Francisco kind of like got well, San Francisco is not like this anymore. And it used to be like this where it was like the craziest motherfuckers always. in San Francisco. Yeah, so they, for it was sure. the craziest one. And now it's yeah. like all they fights all left. broke out, fist fights broke out. Totally. Like, yeah, it was always yeah super violent. But and then like you go to shows now and it's like, oh, there's a little pit. That's cute. But yeah. like back in the day, it was like literally like there was sketchy shit going yeah. on. It was like yeah. It was, scary. Yeah, it was, you know, people just, you know, it, getting it out man you know that's what you totally. did that you know? i mean we did it when we were going percentage. to like the stone and we go to the omni and watch all our heroes you know we go there and just fucking just mosh till we couldn't walk and it's it's part of the part of what you do you know what i mean i believe yeah, that that yeah. is literally why we're all pretty chill dudes because of all the aggression that yeah, it's because we're in death metal bands. Like, yeah, you get it. Yeah, you get all of that. You channel it's that into your music, session. and just by the time you're done playing your instrument or you, you're listening, you're like you get that that aggression is released. Totally. Mm -hmm. Whereas well, people that instead you know, of having to have tell somebody about your problems, that, <laughs> what's that? I was saying yeah, yeah. instead of tell instead of telling somebody about your problems, you just fucking got. Yeah, your it's, it's a very <laughs> it's a very caveman way to get it released, and it's it it, it really actually is yeah. true because everyone tells me like you're so chill, blah blah. Like. Like, oh, you play music? What kind of music do you play? <laughs> and then you show like, them, and they're like, wait. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it doesn't make sense. music ever. And it's like, but the yeah. thing is, it's like, it's it's where, like, I get my, like, if there's any angry energy, it's gone. Yeah, like, it's, I have none of it. That's your balance. That's your yang to your yin or whatever. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm, like, totally. you got, that's, that's what balances you. And that's, we have that, you know, that outlet where a lot of people don't have that outlet. And they're angry people, or they don't know how to be humble, or they don't know how to interact with other humans because they don't have that 
you know, that totally. release, I guess. No, I what. totally agree with that. I think it's like an unfucking like documented kind of thing, like in psychology of like having an outlet that's that aggressive. Like sure. mm-hmm. we're like, you know, it's also like very productive and it's also very creative. Like we're like, sure. a, it's like all these things like balled into one thing where it's like you know it's all aggression it's all fucking hugs and high five like uh, death metal it, shows dude. are like some of the metal I mean, like the most mellowest fucking people i mean that i've hung out with like and met sure. in my life for like the most hugs i've given in one day is probably at sure. a death metal show. literally yeah. is you know? the, i was just about to say i gave more hugs at that slaughter fest than i have in a long fucking time exactly <laughs> it's all yeah. I mean, it's all just i even hugged joseph joseph uh, joseph's like no you're not gonna do it I'm not gonna do it, and I was but like, Joseph, "I'm fucking Joseph gonna do it, dude. I'm gonna fucking do it because he was all sweaty and shit." And I'm like, "I don't care, dude." Oh, that was uh, it. Yeah. I mean, it's also just a great feeling to go to a show again because we for 18 months, it's like you know the future of concerts have been kind of yeah. in, in limbo. Like, what is happening? Totally. How do we do this? How do we navigate it? How, what's sure. the protocols? Like, you know, it's like people don't understand the importance of music and live music. It's like it just. As important yeah. as people going, you know, to go see live sports, it's that same. Like you yeah. need that. I'm into both. I think music even more. Like sports, you can just watch it on TV. Like totally. Sure, it's an experience to go to a baseball mm-hmm. game or being at the stadium or, or at the is, stadium is, is thing. But being at a, a small, intimate show with a, all your fucking friends, you know, the same, you know, mindset. Like that's, you know, taking that away from us is probably the, the worst thing you could have done. But uh, yeah. now that we have it back, it's you know, we appreciate it more because we just went almost two years without it you know what i mean and a lot of people that don't understand like understand like extreme music like i was getting at earlier is like like the camaraderie and the fucking anger release and i mean it sounds like a dorky like corn kind of thing like oh we're getting our anger out whatever like uh it's like it's a whole like fucking you cry at shows joel has angst i cry at shows i have angst yeah, I get goosebumps. Um, I'm, I'm wearing I mean, a fucking. He, he, he whatever, used to dude. play in acidity. Huh, Mike gets goosebumps. I'm wearing a depression mushroom. Yeah. You guys can suck my. Ball. Joel, tell Mike about uh, acidity. Acidity. That was a. Uh, I don't know. It's me and Carrie's band that we started. But uh, <laughs> we 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 it was, no. That was one of the million millions of names we came up with. Like was, I thought acidity was like the sickest name, and everyone's like. That's the dumbest name, dude. Don't do that. <laughs> new metal. <laughs> it was new metal. It was angsty. No, it wasn't, it, it wasn't yeah. new. It was a death metal project. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, no. But uh, no, it's just one of those things that like a lot of people like when they don't understand death metal and stuff. It's, it's actually a cool subject to t- like touch on. A lot of people don't understand it when you show it to them and they're like, oh, they're getting like overwhelmed and stuff. But I'm like, dude, it's this whole a culmination of like people that are like getting these like fucking angry like shit out on stage. Also, like fucking loving the creativeness of what they're doing. Also, like fuck, it's the whole like camaraderie but it's a full like totally. ball of things all in one that it's hard to explain to someone that you're like then they just sort like oh I, I can't understand what he's saying and you're like uh, like yeah. it's way deeper than that it's like yeah. it's well like, it, it took years and years for us to even get to this point like it's i'm not going to show you like spawn a possession to start off like i'll show you sepultura slept not sure. or something like but there's also like, a certain it. amount of people that just don't get it and they'll never get it you know yeah. it's like the, the the few like us that when you hear it you're like there's something about this that appeals to me. I need to know. I need to know more. I need to, you know, listen. Exactly. To more. I need to like, how, yeah. how, how do you know learn how to, now I want to learn how to play this I, and just I, keep going from there. You know? Like once the snowball goes, this is the snowball. Like, yeah. We got stuck on the snowball and then it's like, like, oh, it's crazier, Casey's, crazier, crazier. Casey's wigging Casey's that wigging finger, finger, dude. Let him get in there. All right. I got my finger wig, dude. <laughs> I have a, I have a thought. Okay. So I think it's kind of like with like, Pantera, like going back to Dimebag and stuff. It's like, okay, we're playing this like super heavy music, but it's like a party and you're all invited. Like, yeah, you know, this fucking like attitude, you know? And I think that like with death metal, like a lot of times, like when that is like, like the, the thing, you know, like when people are super cool, like Dallas was super cool with us back in the day. Terrence is like super cool with us. Yeah. And, and before I ever met any of those guys though, like the first person that I met that was like, to me, like, a death metal rock star or whatever when I was super young was you. I mean, Matt Satello, I met you, but met before, but I think right after that, it was you, Mike, like it was like soon after that. And like, I like, you look all, you look all gnarly. And yeah, it's like exactly. I was going nice. to say, I was <laughs> going to say like, you know, and all the old like death metal pictures, even the deed stuff, they're all like this. We're like, 
Yeah. Yeah. Those they, got their, they got their chin up. Yeah, it was a hurry up and look tough, and then, all right, like, let's talk about rainbows and unicorns, yeah. dude. What do you want <laughs> you know, to do? That kind of shit, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then you hang out with you guys, and Eric's like, hey, man, how's it going? How's it going? Yeah. And everyone, you guys are super, and then Diego and all you guys are like sure. the yeah, nicest Diego guys and... in the world, you know? Yeah. And so I think that was like, for me, it was like once I like saw that part of the scene that like, you know, we're playing this brutal music, and we like, yeah. we're, we're having a great time, and like we're, like, we're into that, but it's like a funny, like, art expression like almost like making a scary movie or something but you like sure. you're, you're friends and you laugh about it and like that's how you were and you like showed us that like like yeah, oh, not, dude, no one like guys like ignorant super in the fucking scene. nice like, and smart and has a shit together. yeah everyone's pretty like has a yeah. little dash of genius in the scene you know like they yeah. have their little thing they're not like they're not like idiot cavemen you know what i mean they're like they right, have and that's, the, that's the perception that most people have because, totally, because exactly. they don't understand the music right yeah they don't understand what's the the appeal of the Perfect. music yeah they just they just don't understand and that's the thing it's like when when the light bulb clicks for you and you're like oh shit i get it i'm all about it i want to do this at a young age software like, and then you then dude. you meet like-minded people like yourself you're like of mm-hmm. course we have to become friends because there's not very many out there like us that understand mm-hmm. this and want to do this which and, makes you know, a brotherhood very fast exactly yeah, and dude. that's what it makes and that's the whole thing about and, death metal is it's a brotherhood of like-minded people that are all about the extreme well, what's cool about it is like it's not an elitist thing too because like if, right. if, no, if someone not, else like wants yeah, exactly. to come Good into point. it no, if, if someone wants yeah if someone you want to walk someone into it you're not like yeah. you won't understand yeah, we don't feel like, like we're like what we're doing is better than what you're doing we're all doing the same thing yeah, but just exactly. in a different yeah. way yeah. whoever's the doorman like, you know getting into death metal is like fucking an asshole paved the way that kind of helped us along and it's only right to like to I mean, do okay. that to the next generation is to totally. help them out well, as much as you can and give them it's you know exactly We've and you've done that a million times by the way. that you had with your band rather touring writing recording all of the aspects of uh, it takes to be in a band to pass that knowledge on it just helps the younger generation it's kind that's of all the, we tried to do you know it's kind with of the a label fit. and with touring yeah. and picking totally. bands to go out on the road with us like we like what you're doing it's very similar to what we're doing let's go out and just, let's build this tour package with like-minded bands, like-minded people and go out and say, this and it works is, flawlessly. In, in the moment, this is what extreme death metal looks like in California. Boom. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like a family. That was the whole line. purpose of the bloodletting was just to build yeah, yeah. the yeah. sickest fucking bill that we could. All the bands that are, you know, that are doing something different, but all in the same mindset. Let's- Everyone got along beautifully. Yeah. We all had a great time, and we all yeah. like we're playing crazy music. You know, we're all on the cool. same page, trying to promote the same thing. You know, exactly to, to the to like super small crowds that get it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, totally. that's what it is. That understand. Like, we're not trying to play for people that don't understand it. We're trying to play for the people that know what the fuck it is, yeah. and show up to the show and get in the pit. Fucking. You know, do all that crazy well, shit that you know we did. I, I look at it as a, like a family line of like, like and of, of all like all of us from different like f- backgrounds and races and everything. We're all like in this together with this music thing, and we're like, that's right. so cool. Like, and it's like just based on like what years you're on the timeline. It's like looking up to yeah. your uncle, who's awesome, who used to play in this thing and did this yeah. and that. And, like, and so Deeds was right there. Stuff. Then there was Decrepit. Then there was or, or Severed. That's was the beautiful whatever. thing about music. It's the timeline. Matter- but we're yeah. all like a family of just like, dude, we, we support the timeline, you know, yeah. and we all respect it. Like, it's like going back to Sabbath and the jazz oh, yeah. and music and before that, and every, every, all hundred percent. Yeah. That, I mean, my, my like, dad turned me on to black Sabbath and yeah, all, you know, all the heavy bands. And that's like, I knew I liked heavy music at an early age. Cause it was like Led mm-hmm. Zeppelin and black Sabbath and deep purple and right. you know, all these killer bands and you know, that were extreme for their time they were underground totally. for their time oh, even totally, though they were like yeah. yeah they're taking chances dude for sure and they're just like yeah. people didn't understand it back then because it was like you know in the and 70s it's the same was, i mean nowadays same thing like i hear new music and i'm like i don't understand it and i'm like though yeah. i'm now i'm the old man going you like you just download yeah, it you got to download you know, the like, software dude i mean no, I, get, I also sometimes, sometimes that software doesn't work with your fucking well no 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 but i also <laughs> understand it i also understand it but i don't understand it but like sure. I, you know what i mean like i understand like what they're doing and they're pushing something they're doing something different and i don't understand what they're doing necessarily but i don't i don't disrespect it at all i'm like right. 
fucking yeah, exactly. different thing, I, and that's I fucking dig awesome. That too. Yeah, For sure. yeah. No, if I don't yeah. like something, I don't disrespect it. I'm just like, Me it's too. not really my thing. I would never like. I just like shit people on. making shit. That's all I like, yeah. dude. Just I mean, as long it doesn't as people... matter what genre you play. As a musician, totally. it takes yeah, the same yeah. amount of energy, creative flow, yeah, everything exactly. to get a band at a certain level. It's like it's all hard work. You know, mm-hmm. like the style of music mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily make a difference. Yeah. Really dedicating this, a chunk same, of your life. The to same it. stepping stones to get totally, you know, to that level. And that we're not making a lot of money. So it's like, no. I respect people that put time into making music. For you sure. Know, it's like, because I mean, it's, that's your only, that's one of your ways of, of self-expression is through the music that you write. You know? I had a funny mm-hmm. post the other day about like, I looked at the, the demographics of Odious Mortem's Spotify and I was like, I saw it was just all like fucking like 92% men, like 8% women. It was just all like as far as the demographics. I was like, well, you obviously know I wasn't in this for the chicks. I'm just letting you guys know it was like an actual love well, for the style people, and stuff. Like it wasn't. What if you like, found out that other 8% of female now? was fine as fuck, though? Dude. I mean, we, okay, I think I'm going to announce it now. We, we got approved to do a Motley Crew cover on the new Odious. Oh, nice. Really? From what? from the record label? <laughs> no, you just dropped this right now. Who's <laughs> <laughs> no, that? Serious? Dude. Shout out Riff <laughs> no, Riff like was, was in uh, Motley Crue's jam band. Come on, dude. Are you serious? No. They're all girls, girls, girls. <laughs> <laughs> No, shout uh, out actually Riff was. Uh, we didn't serious. even give a Diego shout out with the slaughter fest thing, dude. Oh, I, I, I haven't Diego. seen okay. him well, since Diego's I, the, the fifth host. He's like a spirit host. I know. He needs yeah, to fucking come back host. because I, I had so much fun. Even yeah. though it was like literally I packed like two, three hours into that time that I was there. I literally stayed there till 4 a.m., dude. Yeah. But nice. I, I just didn't give a fuck, dude. I'm like, I, I got to see everybody. And Diego... I I brought this up before on the podcast and stuff, but I was watching uh, the last uh, Copper Crap podcast, and I was talking about the same thing. Of they they rewatched oh, their first episode. Froze. Oh, I did. I'm froze. My froze. No. froze for a second. No, you're fine. <laughs> okay, I got. Or I, froze, um, maybe. Anthony. Did. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. The, but no, I, they, they they went back and watched their first episode, yeah. like because it was like they're like a year ahead of this ep- this podcast, mm-hmm. and like they were just watching themselves going like Bleh. they were like all animated going like, oh. they were like because you know like when you in the beginning they're just like they're so like fucking excited and having fun and stuff like we've like finally like that's the same way when diego was first on the podcast for us i was like so like excited and like nervous and i mean even though like i know diego very well but sure. still like like you're looking at your own fucking face and you're looking at diego's fucking face on this thing and it, <laughs> it creates it's a totally different style of hanging out which we've you know the pandemic's yeah. kind of like brought upon us and right. it's and uh, we've we've mellowed out so much, like compared to the early. Episodes. I told I you I listen, started listening, but I haven't watched yet. I don't, I don't know what the fuck I look like. On well, that's this. how you right now. That's I look stoned and high as fuck right same now. Same thing that's for like musicians. Like. like when you're, you got to record yourself playing so you can see and you can exactly. hear it from, from an outside ear. Because I used to record myself to my old school Hi Eight fucking video camera, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just so I could <laughs> see. And it actually, once your brain and your 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 eyes see you playing your part. You're like, oh, okay, I can see how I can do that better, or that's that's good the way it is, or I need to improve that, or like critique yourself. Like you're always your own worst. Critic. I got to improve so much on this fucking podcast, dude. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean we that's all. How you, I mean, the, yeah, that's how you we're learn not like by we're watching not Joe what Rogan's. You're doing. Exactly, we're not like. Yeah. We don't have like a solid. You know, we've we've done like a year of this. Well, you know? it, like, it helps that we have like the we now do the podcast podcast to a click track. Okay. So it like helps and like nice. sometimes like <laughs> Anthony at 185 but Anthony, so beats sometimes minute, you're dude. a little bit like off the click track I the totally I dropped <laughs> down to like 175 yeah, yeah like, it's it's close. like it's 197 cool. dude but it's okay it's like click but, but afterwards I just quantized it anyways <laughs> yeah. so. So, Casey <laughs> this is fucking amazing that you bring this up that's so amazing all my parts are sample replaced actually I just re record yeah, what Joseph, I say, no, totally, like, yeah. no, Joseph, we do a lot of like voice replacement with him, but yeah. but like, dude, yeah, no, pretty much this entire podcast is completely quantized. I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't want to let you all know on the secret, but <laughs> kind of. Rod, yeah, Roddy's gonna just, fucking want to pull his episode track. so quickly. I know. Yeah. No, I don't. I did. I just, just for the record, I did not quantize Roddy's <laughs> yeah. per, per specific so, request. Don't yeah. worry, it's all good. Oh. <laughs> 
my god, oh, dude, I'm man. losing my mind right now, guys. <laughs> That's fucking amazing, dude. Good I'm shit. really fucking. I, I had fun with that. I haven't even know where we're at now because we were having so much fun with that. Time to wrap. <laughs> I think it's it? a rapper time. I think it's a rapper. Wrap it. All right. Cool. Well, uh, thank you so much, Mike, dude. Yeah, we appreciate thinking. it for sure, man. No Fuck doubt, yeah. dude. I had I had a blast tonight. I, it, as coming back for two weeks off, dude, I had a fucking killer time with you guys, and I'd love that you were here with us, Mike. Yeah, um, man. Well, I'm stoked to be a part of it again, and you know, invite me anytime. We'll come back tell more stories. And, dude, uh, you're all. There's no doubt. There's gonna be a fucking part for Mark Ham- Mike Hamilton. However, it will be yeah, if, if it sure. is a full deeds episode. Let's fucking do that. Yeah, so, dude, I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't that piss. Too. I wouldn't pissed and was thinking about that Russia story and was like, that's like one of my favorite stories of the whole plot. Like that's Boom. like insane. Yeah. Like that. There's was your clip. Story. There's at least one of your clips, dude. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Well, good oh, yeah. luck. Well, I wanted weird. a quick. I wanted like. Uh, yeah. I think I had a couple fan. I checked my emails. You guys have a couple fan. Oh, yeah, questions. fan questions. Hit those fan, fan questions. questions real quick. Yeah. yeah. One was uh, favorite deed songs that I like to play. Yeah. Um, for me, I just went through the whole album, all the albums, and just checked each one because I didn't play all the songs live. We always picked just a you know a, a few of them, but so I actually wrote them down. So we got for gradually melted. I like playing three minute crawl space. Hell yeah. Uh, oh, trading yeah. pieces. I like playing carnivorous ways mm-hmm. for uh, inbreeding. I like playing infecting them with falsehood. That's a fucking burner. Fuck yes. Yeah. Uh, Path of the weakening. I die on my own terms. That's a burner. That's a good one. Uh, Mark of the legion. Like cleansed by fire. Fuck yep. yeah. Uh, me too. Reduced to ashes. Of course, reduced to ashes. It's like, it's like the, awesome intro and it just like yeah. stops blasting the whole time yep. six minutes long uh crown of souls off of crown of souls of course Fuck yeah of uh, what's to come i like uh waters of space yeah yeah that's a good one. Oh yeah and Fuck then yeah. portals to canon i like portals to canon i just like that huge epic ending at the end so uh yeah that one's good i like, I like oh, all those yeah. those are all the i mean what's your I favorite off one? nucleus um it, they're really hard because like ethereal ancestors is killer. I like that one. Um, Nucleus is cool. What about I Ascension like Vortex, dude? The part yeah, I like that. Like, uh, yeah, I like that uh, one. Too. I like them all, man. Like that album, <laughs> it's just super like special to listen to it front to back. Just knowing like how much work went into it, how long it sat and just didn't do anything for like almost two, three years. And then all of a sudden rekindled this fire to get it going again. And everybody, everybody involved to get it to, you know, to get released. It's just, it's amazing that everybody, yeah. all the people that came together to make that happen. It's just super. Dude, okay. That live, that live, uh, listen or the listen along that we had, you guys did a Facebook live yeah. where we did the yeah, album. Yeah. Listen, dude. And right. everybody was, that was an emotional experience for me, dude. Yeah. yeah Especially yeah. when you get to the end of the album, dude, I fucking, I, I started crying, dude. Yeah. No, I, we all did, man. It was crazy. Cause we we're like, okay, we need to do something for Eric, like a send off. Yeah. And Craig said, well, why don't we do like an old Viking hymn or something like that? And then at the end, we all just cute. scream onward. So it's like, just picture in your mind like all the Vikings just standing on the fucking shore, push pushing the the boat that Eric's in in traditional Viking fashion. It's on fire mm-hmm. and we just mm-hmm. scream onward like Okay, you know, that could yeah. be my first that could be my first tattoo right there. Yeah. Well, that's like that's there like a go. fucking and that's, badass. That's tattoo. the vision that we had when we, you know, we were thinking about putting that together. And it's like, you know, it was just really cool. We got everybody that recorded on the record to just scream onward and just put them all together and it's it and, was fucking great. but i'm saying like that that moment that we had um you did the facebook live where everybody gathered and right. listened together and when we got to that part dude and everybody's raising their glasses yeah. dude, i'm like fuck dude this is real dude this is like the most real moment through the internet i've had throughout the whole pan- pandemic yeah. like i know For we're sure. having these these podcasts and shit like that but the the part that like i was getting most emotional with was our listen along yeah. to that album. Well, it's like even any in any genre i can't think of like a better like in memory of album you know like yeah. i can't like i'm my brain's trying to think right now like what could compare to that like yeah. you guys like literally put together an album based on your brother based on all of our brothers and eric's heroes and you totally. know it just it's a testament to the effect and the the impact that eric 
had on the totally. genre. Just mm-hmm. one guy had so much impact. So much. A, a full genre, like just, you know, there's there's unique leader, Deeds, all the bands that he helped sign. And, you know, he did the best he could with the record label. And he just tried always just like, you know, stand by his word. But just like what you said, and bands. onward, like in onward, yeah. he's taken on so, like so many other bands and so many yeah. things have spawned from from that little, you know, yeah. like conglom- conglomeration of right. uh, bands and stuff back in the day and and friends and stuff like, it's well, you know, when all the, the newer generations start exactly. digging in, in the history books and saying, like, where did it all start? Well, there's, he's going to be right there. Yep. You know, and as far as like one of the names that, that help. Yeah, you know, we'll make sure that he's stuff, there, dude. Metal. Yeah, totally. 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 make sure they well, and you guys sure. say you know like <clears throat> the, the 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 cali death scene that we have whatever uh wouldn't be a thing without like suffo and and effigy and of course after that for sure um, but really also it's about eric and deeds and i think and it's all, pretty much you know, what started it and, and, i mean well, for, i think it's the, well, discord, I, mean, I think it's discord's decrepit birth and and uh deeds you know those three bands were kind of well, like the three d's kind of, dude yeah. <laughs> well, I think triple D's. What up? We it's, didn't even mention deprecated. Just, they were back in there well, too. Yeah. Oh, actually, I, I course, yep, you're yeah. right. Deprecated yeah. for sure. I mean, that's yeah. ninety eight. That's ninety eight on that EP. A, yeah, yeah. Like I pushed the genre and, okay. and you listen, it, anybody who hasn't listened to that EP, get Badass. the fuck back there. Deriving yeah. his creation, dude. Yeah, those yeah. four songs. Oh yeah, are definitely very pivotal in the Cali sound right and no doubt again mike like yeah you are such a good friend to us and have been for so many years and we love you and right th- thank you so much for everything you've done for us over the years Fuck yeah, you're, man, you're the man. one that got me hooked up with axis pedals i mean right. you've done so much for us and our bands and as and friends just been such and a good person to us too. yeah yeah, yeah. And, and, and above then, of all course, that shit it's just being i'm trying to i'm trying to cry dude. for this i'm trying to cry and then for the podcast <laughs> see those tears, boy. yeah yeah anthony's trying to get you down no but but for the podcast though especially man like totally like you were like su- su- such a rad dude like instantly just on the first episode, yeah, dude, we'll do, we'll do it with you know Jacoby, and we haven't talked to him in so many yeah. you know year, and that was so fun for us to do that first episode. For sure. And uh, and then also just like like right off the bat, you were like, good, like good luck to you guys, like you know you're like on our side, like you know always you, know, you were just, uh, just Mike so Hamilton. Sick, I always knew you would be, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Onward, I love, dude. Listen, Onward. man. I love I love people. I love my friends. I love my friendships with people. I just you know is in a crazy world is like all you have is is your word and the way you treat people you know what i mean yeah man you stand behind those two things you know and and well uh just treat people the way you want to be treated that's that's sometimes you meet your heroes and it doesn't go great and all this but like when I met you guys and stuff, Mike, you you were just open arms like from the beginning and like genuine dude inspiration for us to be like that to other people and stuff and like because yeah, i wanted to be an asshole to everyone i was yeah. so looking forward to it and i met <laughs> yeah. Joel all that. yeah no, but but joel's different it's cool he's got like you know he's on his own thing but you know well, there's your first tattoo right there i wanted to be an asshole but then i met mike him <laughs> and, I'll, I'll, and then below it'll put onward right. <laughs> no uh, the onward, onward you, get a, actually... you get a tram stamp that says inward <laughs> <laughs> holy shit there it is. Uh, yes dude <laughs> That's well, it. real yeah, quick i want to say that. there's another fan question i wanted to say my yeah. drum heroes because without them yeah, yeah. i probably wouldn't be the drummer i am today and in no particular order definitely like a steve ashim from deicide yep yeah Derek roddy from hate eternal because that oh, guy yeah. also like took me under his you know wings we went on tour with him and he showed me so many killer techniques and it's like was just a brother to me and just like you know yep. shared all his knowledge with me and of course dave Bartle from you know slayer everybody oh, loves dave Bartle. he's got that flavor on the hand he's got the latin kind of mixed with the metal and sent with alex marquez from you know malevolent creation which is retribution which is one of my favorite albums Fuck yeah. yeah! because that album has so much drumming flavor and also has the aggression of you know a, a death metal drummer it's just like that was kind of like okay this guy's mm-hmm. thinking a little outside the box that was a huge inspiration for me and i'm sure a lot of other drummers gene hoagland of course with you know the dark angel stuff but it wasn't until i heard his work on individual thought patterns was yeah. like oh shit the light bulb went on like 
oh, he's matching the feet right along with the, the picking and everything. It's like, it's all just, you know, that opened in a whole new door for me. Sean Reinert, of course, with Cynic. Mm-hmm. That was actually pretty. And also on human, Death Human, like who oh, is not influenced oh, by Death Human. It's like, I know. and then uh, Pete Sandoval, Malevolent Creation, of course. And then Lee Harrison, Imperial Doom. Lee Harrison doesn't get enough credit, but he's one of the OG. Monstrosity? Of, yeah, Monstrosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Oh, yeah, one dude. of the OG, like, that. you know, blasters back in the day. And he's been to this day still hard at work. So yeah, I, I, I think I hear a lot more people uh, cite er, later monstrosity stuff than the earlier stuff. And I'm like, yo, where are yeah. you at on Imperial Doom yeah. and Millennium? Yeah. Millennium. Yeah. 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 Both sure. those, those records two, with Corpse Rider on vocals. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, for me, why is everybody talking that. about the later shit? I mean, like, in Dark Purity for me, it was like, I was in, I was getting, no, that, that is a honed and record. It's like, very polished. Yeah. I love yeah. it. But like, Let's That's the first thing that, I heard from them. Got, so it's, that got yeah. to you. Got to go. You got to get to feel what it was like to get to in dark purity, you know, and, yeah, and yeah. have corpse grinder on vocals and have that more like darker, like filthy Florida sound in there, yeah. but still dope. Another Dan Seagrave classic album cover, man. Like, think about totally. the impact that Dan Seagrave alone has had on the scene. That's true. Just, I just would love his artwork. Like of kids just picking up, on, kids, kids picking up albums because they're seeing, they're like, they're into death metal and they see it in the record store and they're like, oh shit, that looks like... Yeah, Dan Seagrave, I bought every album that Dan Seagrave did. Totally. Like, I'm buying them all. It's like, totally. it's, and, they, and, none of them, yeah. and you open that and they up never, They me, never Mike, sucked. Dude. They never sucked. Mike opened that up to me today. Like, literally, like, let's get some art to get some artists on there and i'm like yo we don't talk yeah. to anybody else except for music it's been an idea for sure we need to get we need to get, like people that are engineers all and, the and like producers well, and you know shit, just but... integrate that in the second year just you know what i mean boom yeah yeah well, we're gonna 2. have 0. to fuck. we're 2. You know, 0, just, dude you know we're gonna run out of, we're gonna run out of fucking death metal fucking guitar <laughs> no we're not we're done like, we're not running nah, out of nah. shit dude we got it <laughs> We've been we've been uh, staying the course this whole time, dude. Yeah, no, yeah. totally. I mean, that's a great idea, though. I think it's really cool to bring the. There's multiple sides of art that aren't only audio that are coming from death metal. It's a lot of, yeah, like, it's, uh, it's it's everybody that was like minded that contributed to it, you know. So totally. that and you can't talk about death metal without the death metal artists that created the album covers. You know what I mean? Totally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because when yeah. you first hear death metal, you're like, are they serious? Like, what they're talking about? Like, yeah. and then you kind of f- figure out that's like a story. It's like a horror sure. movie it's like a it's like a, it's not like they're not saying they're gonna fucking shove a knife into someone <laughs> like uh, it's a v- vagina or something it's like they're gonna, they, like they, it's like part of a fucking horror movie that you see and you're like you're yeah. shocked by it but also too you're shocked by the musicianship too it's like yeah it's a double-edged sword with that it's like not just only you know it's not well, only the, audio. the artists the artists are also very like responsible for you know collaborating with the artists and actually probably helping like for us working with Raymond Swanlin, oh, like yeah. he Shredder. he he basically like worked with us on Crown of Souls. Crown of Souls. He, kind of, he kind of keyed that phrase. He goes, "Oh yeah, I see you guys want like kind of a Crown of Souls." I was like, "Oh shit, dude, there it is." Yeah. So he's responsible for you know when we were sitting there collaborating with the concept for the art and the cover, like this is what we wanted. And he just then he said the phrase, and we're like, "That's well, there's, there's literally the my the, favorite, probably my favorite death metal cover." Like, yeah, there's the name of like, the album right there. So yeah, just seeing like we were on tour with you guys for that that yeah, album, and I'm like yeah, yeah. looking at that artwork. I was like, Gee, like, and I, I remember like Odious hitting up me like, "Hey, what's up?" And he's just all, yeah, yeah. yeah, dude, he's all like six grand. We're like, "Fuck." <laughs> <laughs> well, you know like, the history of that guy. He he used to work. Um, I'm not sure the name of the, the company that made the video game, but the game, the video game Abe's Odd World. Oh yeah, yeah. He was he was the art director for all the the uh, landscape backgrounds. And oh so, shit! That makes just, sense. Just Google Raymond Swanlin and everything will come up. He does like you know fantasy books. He does like trading cards. He does all kinds of stuff. The guy is like, he's an amazing artist, dude, and That's and awesome. a really humble and nice guy. Like just really super intelligent. Like we're sitting there talking concepts for album covers, and he was just like he would just totally get in the mindset with us. And go there, which is yeah. awesome, you know. Oh, that that album cover, like I remember, blew me away. Just like all the faces yeah. in the fucking crown and stuff, I was like, yeah. oh my god! Like, yeah, I think like he charged us like two grand or three grand for that cover, but it was totally worth it. Oh yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. one of those like like Par Olufsen really hooked oh, us yeah. up back in the day. Like, yeah. um, Same. he was like, he was like, he's all, I love your guys' music. We want to, I want to like hook you guys up, blah blah, blah. and like 
my, my friends have hit him up later and it's like he's you know obviously that's, that's, that's capitalism it's like yeah okay well you've done your piece you've done your your work you've done your intro work now it's time to fucking reap the benefits of like your sure. fucking hard work you know what i mean yeah. so no good for them man good yeah them. par would be a good par would be a good one as well that'd be cool totally yeah, i'd love yeah. to get him on hell yeah, yeah. fuck yeah this is all good shit, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I like I'm, to like yeah. publicly apologize to Tony Cole. Like I think back in those days, uh, oh yeah, Tony. Yeah. He like uh, we, like we were gonna do some art with him, and then it ended up working out with Par. And like I apologize if anything went awry, but he's an amazing artist. He's oh no, Tony, Tony, yeah, yeah, for sure. You, I mean, that guy probably has been he's on amazing. ninety to a hundred plus album covers, probably more totally. than that. And he's a super humble guy, and he's super outgoing, like awesome dude. Yeah, totally. He's, he's yeah. got to be part of that. That's yeah. For sure, he's got to be in there. Yeah, we were kind of younger, trying to figure out like who's going to do the art. We were like hitting up people and stuff. Yeah, and we went with Par, and yeah, we felt bad because because fucking Tony fucking treads. You know. Yeah, no, he's yeah, and he's got a. He comes from a different perspective. You know what I mean? It's really cool because mm-hmm. it's all organic, and he does. He paints. You know, he he actually he's an actual painter. He doesn't do just like digital. He does it all though, which is yeah, really cool. Yeah. And just a nice awesome. guy. He's every time you see him, he's just got a big smile on his face. Just good guy. Nice. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Well, thanks again, Mike. I fucking absolutely, man. We all love you to death, man. You're the fucking man. Love you guys too, man. Yeah, Yeah. this wouldn't be here. I mean, we wouldn't be on episode whatever without you. You got the fucking check. You got the onward fucking going. You guys did the work. Listen, you guys all have a body of work that you've worked hard to accomplish. This is one of them, and including the albums that you've all been on, and you even have your influence in the scene as well. So, this is what we do. We're one big family trying to just you know push. Our message to everybody is listen Thank to happy you, music and be here. And we live, humans. we live to fucking <laughs> yeah. to do the same thing you have done for us to other people. Absolutely. Yeah, dude. I mean, yeah. it, you just with other things in our uh, careers, you've also helped us with this. The death metal dad comes through again. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, dude, awesome. This is this is great. I love it all. Right um, thanks again to all the subscribers. One k plus now. Like let's get to 10k awesome. next year. Hit them uh, likes. Help them help likes. Us, yeah. All that shit. Hit the buttons. I always say hit the <laughs> buttons. We're humbled Bells, by your the fucking hands. You know, all that your shit. love and all that. Yeah, dude. We love you guys. Just be like the Bronicon drummer and just sit there and just hit that <laughs> yeah. mic. Yeah, dude. Just get like <laughs> exactly, 20 accounts dude. and just be like this with yeah, it. Yeah. Boom. Blast beat through all our fucking episodes. Yeah. Just Thank you, yeah, guys. So yeah, yeah. Thank, oh, yeah. awesome, thank you so much. And uh, I think that since we're in year two and we've been talking to our death metal dad, we might be getting some merchandise going. We got some shit going yeah. on. Let's so, uh, yeah, we're finally going to get that going for you guys who want it. Uh, but, yeah, we love all of you. We'll be here for episode 53 next week. And uh, have a great weekend. All right. Cheers, y'all. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Peace.